Number seven, Matt Hildreth. The Hawks are coached by Mr. Don Gordon. Tonight, the Frontier Football Parents Association will be selling 50-50 raffle tickets. Halftime will be entertained by the Frontier Regional Band. Five brought to you by Riverside Radiator and Hubie's Tavern and Restaurant and by Riverside Radiator. Participating sponsors include Hubie's Tavern and Restaurant, Riverside Radiator. Tonight's game also brought to you by Hubie's Tavern and Restaurant and by Riverside Radiator and finally by Hubie's Tavern and Restaurant. Night tonight. No, no. Here come the Red Hawks! Financial support for FCAT's coverage of local high school sports provided by Leader Home Centers, your hometown home center with five locations to serve you in Amherst, South Deerfield, Barrie, Greenfield, and Brattleboro, Vermont, or online at leaderhome.com. Visit them for all your building material needs. Raymond Financial Services, LLC. Take charge of your financial future. Insurance, investments, and benefits for individuals and employers. Attorney Daniel Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan's a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs. Joey Hildreth, escorted by his mom and dad, Bill and Sherry Hildreth. Number 29, Stephen Worthley, escorted by his mom and dad, Brad and Lee Worthley. Number 28, Aaron Landry, escorted by his mom and dad, Jamie and Geneva Pickford. Number 78, Matt Carlson, escorted by his mom, Wendy Carlson. Number 24, Bryce Dobis, escorted by his dad and stepmom, Jason and Kate Dobis, along with his mom and stepfather, Billy and Rick Gamble. Number 15, Cole Price, escorted by his dad, Eric Price. And number 70, Brandon Trustwell, escorted by his mom and dad, Bill and Denise Trustwell. Yeah, pretty much out of the playoff picture after a couple of weeks of the season, but these two teams here tonight, both He's still vying for a spot. Seniors, if East Hampton wins, Hawks, they outright win the lead. That's it, game over. Luck, but fellas. Frontier wins this, this year tonight at home. Uh, it's still up for debate. Each team would have uh, two losses, and then we'd have to uh, see what happens the last couple of weeks. East Hampton comes in with a 4-2 and two overall record. They are perfect in the Intercounty League North at 4-0. and oh. Frontier at 5-1 and one overall, 3-1 and one in the Intercounty North. East Hampton lost to Ware last week. Uh, a non-league game, 38-6. to six. Their lone touchdown was a 30-yard pass from Nick Pellegrini to Max Davio. Frontier, meanwhile, beat Turner's Falls last Friday night, 33-21. That game here on Bear Country. Aaron Landry of Frontier, a big effort for him, and he is very close to 1,000 yards once again. Yeah, you know, Aaron had kind of a slow start to the season, too. Eight carries, well, 78 yards in the first game isn't a slow start, but the next game against Greenfield, six carries, just 24 yards. Um, very unlike... 
Aaron Landry and the performance we had seen the year before, but uh, then they really got it geared up. They got the running game going between him and Worthley. Landry now has rushed for 273, 235, 101, and 260 yards, respectively, in four straight games. He has racked up 98 carries, 983 yards, and 14 touchdowns. And again, you look at Stephen Worthley, who his big game, 22 carries, 242 yards against Franklin Tech, scored a touchdown in that one. He had a five-touchdown game against Mahar, 19 carries, 162 yards. So uh, Worthley comes into this game with 709 yards on the season, nine touchdowns on 92 carries. Equal carries, Landry with a few more yards, a few more touchdowns, but either one of those guys can get the job done. Now, in terms of Frontier's defense, they have been struggling against other teams' passing attacks, and Pellegrini, Nick Pellegrini, the quarterback for East Hampton, even in a loss against a very powerful rare team, he had some success. 12 of 22 passing, 134 yards, a touchdown, no interceptions. And again, Frontier's pass defense has really inflated the stats of some of the local quarterbacks. Yeah, I mean, and everything I've read about uh, where is they're just beastly. I haven't seen them in person, but I've read, followed them, and, uh, you know, they're they're undefeated and, and for a reason. I mean, they're just beating up on people this year. They're that good. But, yeah, when you talk about the quarterbacks that have had success against Frontier this year, you're looking at Owen Phelps. He had his biggest game of his, of his season to date. Uh, 10 of 16, 175 yards, three touchdowns through a pick in that one. Sam Paul for the Mahar Senators. He was 10 of 18, 237 through three touchdowns against this defense. And Kyle Dodge uh, had the biggest year of his year uh, his year to date. Also 9 of 18, 260 yards, wow. three touchdowns <laughs> through a pick. Funny story, when we walked in the locker room afterwards and we were talking to Chris LaPointe, he said, how many yards did Dodge have? And I told him about 260. He went, oh, good, my record stands. He threw for 288 back yeah, in the barely. day. Yeah, <laughs> barely. It stood just barely. But, yeah, the idea is, is that there have been some good quarterbacks and uh, they have torched this defense. So now... Knowing that, does East Hampton throw a little bit more than they have? They've geared it up here the last couple of weeks. They've thrown the ball more in the last two weeks than they had uh, the first four. Well, Sean, we were here, what, three weeks ago for that Mahar Frontier game. We said on the pregame that the scoreboard likely would get a workout. It sure did. Might it happen again tonight? You know, look at East Hampton. I, you know, the fewest points they scored was six against Ware and eight against Taconic, and they can imagine what Taconic has this year as well. So, uh, And they lost a tough game there, 16-8. Otherwise, they put up 52 on Mahar, 43 on Tech, 40 against Greenfield, uh, and 20 against Athol. So I mean, this is a potent offense. 115 points scored. They've only given up 99. They have pitched two shutouts, Mahar and Franklin Tech. Take a look at Frontier. I mean, these numbers are just uh, eye-popping, really. 40 points against Pittsfield, 35 against Palmer, 56 against Mahar, 41 against Tech, and 33 against Turner's Falls. The fewest points they've scored in a game this year was the 20 against Greenfield, and that cost them. They lost that game 22-20. And that is the Red Hawks' lone loss so far of 2017. Big game tonight. First place, East Hampton. Second place, Frontier. If East Hampton wins, they are the Intercounty League North champions for 2017. We're getting very close to kickoff at the top of the hour. Take a time out here on our pregame show. More pregame to come right here. This is Bear Country 95.3. Hi, Aaron Landry, captain, number 28, running back, defensive back. Cole Price, number 15, tight end, and defensive end. Bryce Dobis, number 24, running back and linebacker. Stephen Worthley, captain, number 29, running back linebacker. Joe Hildreth, 63, offensive line, defensive line. Matt Carlson, captain number 79, offensive line, defensive line. Brandon Truswell, number 70, offensive line, defensive line. We are minutes away from the opening kickoff here. It is senior night. Frontier hosting East Hampton. We'll take another time out here. We're back. The opening kickoff coming up on Bear Country 95.
Bryce, Bryce Dobis, Aaron Landry, Steve Wordley, Joe Hildreth, Brandon Tresswell, and Matt Carlson playing their last home game here, being honored before the game. And they, I gotta tell you, Frontier Regional, they had put up these posters on the fence at the gate, and those posters of the kids are, are awesome. I mean, like, you you said it, like, NFL quality. Like, it'd be like going to Gillette and seeing this huge poster of Brady or whomever. Yeah, no, and that's uh, what it looked like. Very, yeah. very cool. And then uh, as you walked in, they've got some uh, balloons with the, uh, the school colors, blue, white, and red, and some uh, different ways they've got them put together. Uh, very delightful, nice crowd. I was just saying, as I came in, I, I uh, pulled in with the car, and, you know, there's the volleyball game, the girls are in the gym, you can hear the noise coming out, and you look over, some kids playing basketball, and then a bunch of kids over in a different field playing football, and you know, it's just uh, it's that kind of feeling that you like to do, this is a playground, you know, this is your school, and you can see uh, the pride runs deep, and all kinds of activities and things going on, and now the captains are getting ready to meet at the center of the field, but yeah, absolutely, uh, just always a buzz with activity, look at that, I mean, the band is great here, a good cheerleading squad, very solid. Well, I'm glad you mentioned the cheerleading squad because I was talking with their uh, coach and I said, hey, what about the posters for, for, the, for the senior cheerleaders? And she explained to me that the cheerleading squad is the same for football and then for basketball season. So on senior night in basketball, that's when they'll be honored then as opposed to... Uh, you know, a lot of these frontier football players, you know, they, they don't play basketball, so they have their senior night. Right. The hoop squad will have their senior night. Every yep. sport has their senior night. Yeah, so. with the cheering a little different because they got the two split in the two seasons, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So I thought that the yep. girls were kind of getting forgotten, <laughs> and I said, come on, they're, they're part of the situation here big time. And yep. she said, no, no, we're, we're, we're good. But yeah, I, I said, we, I said, well, Hubie and I will give them a special shout out on the air tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, hey, listen, uh, it, uh, they work just as hard, you know, and practicing and uh, being in shape and being able to do the things that they do as well. And, uh, Hey, a musician puts a lot of time into their craft as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah, anybody out here doing that, anything they're doing to support, uh, always a good thing. Big crowd as expected. A lot of folks have come up from East Hampton, and, of course, the locals are here as well. Biggest game of the season, at least so far here on Bear Country. We are expecting some local teams to make the postseason. Of course, that doesn't happen until November, but we're getting close. It's this weekend yeah. of games, then next weekend of games, yeah, and then close. we'll see who's playing who and who's going to be a non-qualifier. And hopefully we'll have some good local representation. Okay, we are now set for the we would ask national everyone to anthem please rise, remove for the Frontier Regional As the Frontier band. Regional Band honors America by playing our national anthem. set for football perfect weather conditions we've been very lucky here sean this fall we've had really really nice weather and it, it's good for a game of this magnitude you want it to have uh, you know good field conditions not have uh, precipitation or wind be a factor it's, it's perfect it, the, you know, the weather has been great and uh, you know the football has been great it really has been a unique season for us and in that the uh, teams that were supposed to be strong weren't in some cases, and teams that were supposed to be weak aren't, and uh, some good competitive well, games that we did not expect, and some upsets as well. Uh, week to week has been a lot of fun in the great weather in, uh, in, uh, in the South Deerfield area. Come on in and watch the football game. This is going to be a good one. Big number 44, Jacob Bryant, has a teed up on the Frontier 40 to kick away to East Hampton. So the Eagles will be on offense first. Ish Akinau. Quentin Baker's 
zero. Now we're back deep, right around their 10 yard line. Frontier in their home, crimson red uniforms with blue pants and helmets. He's taken the visiting maroon and white. Line drive kick taken at the 13 by Akenauer. Right hash mark, finds a seam across the 20, across the 30, then gets stood up at the 35 yard line and driven back. Bryce Dobis among those on the stop. First and 10 for the Eagles from their own 35-yard uh, line, and we will see what kind of uh, offensive play selection they do, knowing what we all know. Yeah, again, this is a team that traditionally runs the football, but over this season, the quarterback, Pellegrini, has really matured. You can see the numbers have increased, have, have improved, and again, coming off a pretty good effort against a very tough wear team, 12-22, 134 yards, through a pick and a touchdown in that one. Helms and Baker, Cicero to the near side left. They go shotgun formation on first down. Long snap count. Pellegrini gives to Akenauer on the right side. Bounces to the outside. Frontier strings it out, but Ish with some nice moves on the far side of the field gets driven out of bounds, out across the 40-yard line. We'll spot him down right around the 43, second and short. Yeah, we talked about all the different weapons. Akenauer is the first guy out to shoot. He's going to have a gain of about Six yards, we'll say there. Just a little quick get to the outside. Frontier generally defends that play pretty well. They don't usually get too many guys, let them get to the outside. He was able to gain six. Zade Jenkins will go into a slot right formation. Akenauer, the lone back again. Shotgun formation. Pellegrini calling the signals on second down and short. He's back to pass. Looking to the right. He's going to throw a deep ball on the right side. And that is... Caught for a first down inside the 40-yard line. Baker Cicero came back to an underthrown ball. Nice job. 27 yards on the catch. And the funniest part was when he went to go, he tried to elude the tacklers, made a nice cutback, and then he got sideswiped by his own lineman. Otherwise, he might have been. It looked like he was coming backwards to go forwards and might have had a lane, but got bottled up by his own guy. First play of the game it through the air. 27 yards for Pellegrini. And the ball now spotted on the 33-yard line. First down and 10 for the Eagles. They are moving right to left here in the opening quarter. We play 11-minute quarters, opening drive of the game. Akinar will come in motion, but they give to Helms up the middle. A big hole. He spins through a couple of tackles and looks like he is close to another first down. Maybe just a little bit shy, but he is inside the 30-yard line. Yeah, they're not height and weight on these rosters for East Hampton, but we were looking at him in the pregame, and David Helms is a senior and he's a pretty big dude. We're thinking maybe 6'2-ish, and he's got some size to him as well. And the quarterback, Pellegrini, he looks like the prototypical quarterback. I mean, he easily is 6'3". Long in lane with that big arm. Coming in motion is Davio. They fake it to him. He's back to pass. Heavy rush. Dumps it out to Helms. Frontier stays home. Helms cutting back against the grain. Spins to the outside and is tackled from behind. But not after a game, Garrett DeForest on the stop. Going to be a first down. He'll go for about six yards, a lot of running there. But looked as though Frontier had that play bottled up and East Hampton able to get a, a good gain and a first down. We talked about Akenauer, he had the first carry. Against Greenfield, he had four carries and 150 yards and three touchdowns. Touched the ball four times, ran for a buck and a half and in the end zone three of those four. That's a nice average. Wow. First and 10 from the Frontier 27. The drive continues. Inside give to Helms on the right side. Takes it over tackle. And he brings it down inside the 20 yard line. We'll see right about where he ended up. Right near the 20, well, let's see. Looks like just outside the 20. Second and five coming up. Well, the question was, would they throw the ball or would they run the ball? And right now, a little bit of both. Three runs, two passes. Out of the shotgun. This is more like a pistol formation now with the quarterback Pellegrini and Helms is actually behind him, not to his side. Coming motion is Akenauer. They give it to Ish. He'll try the left side. Frontier, oh, no, though, comes up in. Work. Oh, boy. Oh, he broke the tackle, comes back to the right, and then gets tackled finally, gets wrapped up there. Matt Hildreth, the defensive back, brings him down for a big loss. That is about the most fun you'll see on a five-yard <laughs> loss. Really, any time. That kid almost, he squirted free. He was tackled. He was wrapped up, and then he was able to escape that one. But all of a sudden, if you start going the other way, there's guys coming at you at different angles, and... He got tracked down there, and uh, gonna, yeah, going to lose about five yards on the carry. Yeah, the ball all the way back to the 29-yard line. It's going to be third down and about 13 from there. Clock in motion, 7-18 to play opening quarter, opening drive here. So we are scoreless. Helms will stay in the backfield behind Pellegrini. Akenauer 
out there on the right. Near side receiver, Baker Cicero. Long snap count, very long snap count. Now we got motion, and we got flags everywhere. Which way are we going? Frontiers clapping as if it is against the Eagles. We will see, the officials are talking about it. And it looks like they are going to step off against East Hampton. I think, no, wait. East Hampton saying, no, no, offsides frontier. They're gonna go the other way with it, all right. Well, it took some time and I, I'll be honest with you, I don't know. I mean, every, you know, there's just a whole lot of things happening right there, people moving, and uh, they decided that that is gonna go against the Hawks. So the five yard loss, get that right back. So it's a more manageable third down, third and about eight now. Ball at the 24 yard line. And new offensive player in the backfield right now, Soapy Peck. He is standing behind the quarterback. Back to pass Pellegrini. They're bearing down on him. Dumps it off to Helms in the left flat. Takes it back to the center of the field inside the 20 yard line, down close to the 16. And that is close to a first down. It is going to be a first down. Yeah, give him a gain of a nine on that. So 36 yards, three for three is Pellegrini. And that was a huge first down for East Hampton right there. Pretty much everything they had been doing worked pretty well. And then they had the loss, and all of a sudden, third and very long. Frontier gives them five on the penalty, and then first down there. So the ball now spotted just outside the 15-yard line, it looks. Yep, first down in 10. 6-10 to play here in the opening quarter. This drive now approaching five minutes. It's been a great drive. And then the pistol formation, Helm standing behind Pellegrini. Nick takes the snap. Gives it to Helms up the middle. Has a nice hole. It does close Helms rather right quickly, but Helms is able to take it inside the 10 to around the 9. Give him a gain of about 6 or 7 right See, there. Second down coming up. The the 20 yards now for Helms. Three carries. Seven yards, he seven is also a, one of the favorite targets for the quarterback. He's not caught one today yet, but he caught four balls against Ware last week. 33 yards. Had a big game against Franklin Tech. Three catches, 91 yards, and a pair of scores. In the pistol formation, Helms is the tailback here. And they will yeah, take it right motion. side, but whistles and looks like a procedure call against East Hampton. So that'll momentarily disrupt the drive here. But other than that, other than those penalties, they pretty much have been able to do what they wanted. Yeah, five steps forward, five steps back on these two, really. But yeah, again, the running plays have worked. The passing plays, he's perfect. Nick Pellegrini, he's just a junior, and again, Big, tall, lanky young man. And on that last pass, I, I wanted to say the most impressive thing he did was as he's backpedaling, of course, his height, you can see over that guy coming in on him and real calm, just kind of took his time and waited for his receiver to open up. He didn't panic, delivered a perfect throw. Second down and eight. Ball back at the 14 yard line. And oh, this play gets blown up in the backfield. Ish Akenauer got belted by a couple of guys, Price, Dobis, and Wordley. They bring them down for a big loss. And now they are looking at third and very long. Akenauer had, had six yards on his first carry, but he's gone backwards now on his last two. He's minus six yards, three carries for Ish Akenauer. Nice blasting through for the Red Hawks. And now it'll be third down and about 13 here. Ball back outside the 15 yard line. Nick Pellegrini looks over the Frontier D, settles in, calls the signals, takes the snap, he'll roll to the right, Looking sets left. up, throwing towards the left side is. of the end zone. It is caught, touchdown! Touchdown, touchdown to Quentin Baker, Baker Cicero. It is six nothing Eagles. He's been hitting him in the last few weeks as well. He caught a couple balls last week, caught three the week before, and that there was just perfectly timed. You could see him release three wides to the right. He was on the it's inside Pellegrini left. He Baker cut back to in towards the post, but then all of a sudden turned the route. The, the defender never even saw he left, and then the ball was de delivered right into the corner. So perfectly well. Uh, uh, the route was run well. The blocking was good, and another good throw by Pellegrini. East Hampton will go for two, and this time the quarterback Pellegrini will be in under center, more traditional set, and they give it to David Hellams on the right David side, Helms. and he in easily is into the end zone for the two-point conversion. Four, six four minutes, six quarter. seconds left to play here in the opening eight. quarter, and on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard, it's East Hampton eight, Frontier nothing.
Financial support for FCAT's coverage of local high school sports provided by Leader Home Centers, your hometown home center with five locations to serve you in Amherst, South Deerfield, Barry, Greenfield, and Brattleboro, Vermont, or online at leaderhome.com. Visit them for all your building material needs. Raymond Financial Services, LLC. Take charge of your financial future. Insurance, investments, and benefits for individuals and employers. Attorney Daniel Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan's a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs. Edo McMillan in return for the Red Hawks. Frontier ball first and 10. From and the it's going to be, let's see, 40, 48 yard line. 48 yard line. So pretty good opening field position for the Hawks, but they trail eight zip. And do you think they're going to come out throwing the ball? No, everybody says no. Of course they're not. They have two no, guys. No, they're yeah. not. They're not going to throw the ball at all tonight. You know this. I know this. No, they're going to run the ball. Well, we'll see how it actually plays out. But they do have two guys trending for 1,000. And, of course, Landry's only 17 yards away. Aaron will take Aaron it on Landry first down. Again. Cuts to the outside. Has the first down. <laughs> He's going to get 1,000 for the season right now. In fact, he may go. Right sideline tripped Landry's up inside the 10-yard line. 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 Baker Cicero just scored the touchdown. Line. Just prevented a touchdown. Uh, that goes for about 44 yards, and the only reason I burst out in laughter is because we just knew we needed 17 yards, and <laughs> we put the over-under on carries at two. Two yep. touches for so him to get that. We said maybe one, but maybe two, and uh, he took the under, you it was win. one. Yep, that was it. First touch. Timeout. Oh, uh, boy. And a timeout on the field. We will take the break. East Hampton takes the break. 3.42 to play here in the first quarter. And on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield scoreboard, it's East Hampton 8 Frontier, nothing but threatening. from the Eagle 13 yard line. I read a paper that said they won. I remember that. <laughs> That's right. There were t-shirts printed that said they won. Those are not around anymore. Yeah. Another t-shirt that has one score on one side yeah. and the final score on the other one has making the rounds. But we'll have that game for you starting at 5.30. Stephen Wordley takes it on his David first carry. He got whacked after Eagles. just a short game. But the ball now down uh, just outside the 10 yard line. We'll call it the 11. It'll be second down and eight. Again, watching Aaron Landry over the last couple years. Last year uh, just had some explosive games again this season, and I can't reiterate the last four games for this kid. He's rushed the lowest he's rushed for is 101 yards. That was against Tech. 260 against Turner, 235 against Mahar, and 273 yards against Palmer. Oh, those are just the huge numbers. Looks like we're going to have another timeout. And another timeout. timeout. This one Red called Hawks. by Frontier. And uh, we're going to keep it here. This looks like it's going to be just a quick break here. So. I, was gonna say, I thought that was a great use of a timeout by East Hampton right there. You know, again, they've just gone on that big, long drive. They ate up six-plus minutes off the clock. And then all of a sudden, the first play from scrimmage, there goes Aaron Landry. And, you know, again, it was the first play from scrimmage, but that's a good time to say, okay, let's, okay settle down, guys. You know, yeah. if you go back running that huddle and all of a sudden, you know, you've got that last play in your mind and, oh, no, you know, a good timeout by the coach. Settle down, guys, and stop them. All right, Frontier now comes up. Dobus is the fullback and the double wing formation. Coming in motion is Aaron Landry with the inside give to Wordley on the right side. Ran into his blockers, kept the legs, chugging, Back and he's only about 5'6", but he makes a nice game. There really wasn't a lot of space there. Yeah, you're right, Jeff. Yeah, 5'6", but he goes about a buck seventy-five, and, you know, again, he is strong, too. 5'6", doesn't sound big, and 175 is not that big, but he runs big. Ball down to around the seven or so. It'll be third down and three or four here. Needs to get to the three for the first. Yeah, we'll call that seven yards. So a couple carries now for Steven. And of course, Aaron had the first carry of the game for the Red Hawks for 44 yards. Hildreth, the quarterback. 
the give. Landry, right side yeah, Landry, to uh, Wordley, rather, right touchdown. touchdown. Quick seven yard spurt. It is eight sets with a two point conversion to come. Yeah, quick, that's exactly just what you just said. Steven Worthley, quick. Aaron Landry, quick. Four plays, 58 yards, and into the end zone for the Red Hawks. So East Hampton comes out the opening drive, and they take a nice long drive down the field. They punch it in. Frontier takes four plays to come back down, and now they're two points away from tying this thing up. They will go for two. Hildreth. Ducks in under center. East Hampton kind of jumping around. Wordley comes in motion. Steve will take him on the right side. East Hampton there waiting for him though. Did not make it. Made it to the Conversion one, no good. but did not make it in. Time out on the field. 2.26 to play eight. here in the first quarter. And on the car quest of Greenfield. Sound Deerfield and Shelburne Falls scoreboard. It's East Hampton 8, Frontier 6. taken by Ekinara, zone 20, right hash mark across the 30, and then runs into a Frontier player. Great downfield coverage, that was Wordley. And that kid, I mean, uh, you know, small in stature, but he is just strong and he's tough. You know, there are guys that are just football players, you know, they just get it and they see it, they have the vision, and Wordley, I mean, again, he just kind of snakes through all those guys trying to block him out of the way and gets right to the ball, the carrier, I mean, as quickly as he could. Look, the ball was fielded at the 20, the kid ran nine yards in the time it took Worley to come all the way down the field and tackle him. I mean, yeah, yeah again, that's athleticism and that's uh, football smarts. Yeah, Akenauer, uh, much bigger uh, physically than Steve, but he put a pasting on him. First down and 10, shotgun formation, Pellegrini with Akenauer to his left, double wide outs on either side. Little swing pass on the left side, a little pitch rather, it goes to Akenauer. He gets Akinawa stood up, and, and he's a rather tall runner. That's why he keeps getting Goldie's stood up, but he does make a nice gain of about five. It'll be second down. Yeah, again, he'd had the one run for six yards, and then he'd lost a bunch of yards. So right there, that'll get him five. Six, and, uh, second and four. Uh, we'll give him six, then we'll call him back to square one. Uh, four carries and now no yards for Ish. 39-yard line. Second down and four. We're inside of two minutes now to play here in the opening quarter. 8-6 in favor of East Hampton. They scored through the air and then got the... Two point conversion on a run. Frontier just scored with Wordley from six yards and then the conversion run by Steve was no good. Yeah, three Helms runs for 20 yards and the rest was all through the air with Pellegrini, four for four. Pellegrini, shotgun. Helms behind him, coming motion is Akinauer and now, go. I think, Frontier. yeah, uh, coming across. I and think he made contact, yeah, made I think contact, so. Yeah, so that would be definitely encroachment and that'll result in a first down. I didn't see the lineman move unless he flinched before that, but I think it was, no, oh, well. On the eagle. It's gonna go the eagle, so that guy moved, uh, then the Red Hawk came across, so. so. They'll mark him back five and that'll present second down and nine now. That was second the one thing the in the Turner's game last week that kind of stuck out was the penalties the against the Red Hawks. And, you know, obviously it didn't cost them, but there were a couple of critical penalties that they did make. and yeah, It could have cost them, uh, for yeah, sure. It could have, yeah. and it, unlike uh, a Frontier team, they don't usually, they're not usually a, a very penalized squad. Second down and nine after the penalty. Akinauer now comes in motion with the inside give to Helens, but Dave got oh, popped got immediately. I don't see who got that here. That was, uh, what's that? Matt Carlson Number 79, that's the, uh, one of the seniors Yard. being under tonight, Matt Carlson. 37. Six feet, 250, he put a licking on him. Going to be third and about eight yards, and fully expect Pellegrini to go up top on this one. Two receivers to the near side left. And two receivers up top on the right. Lone back is Helms. Pellegrini looks over the frontier D. Third down and eight. Drops back to pass, looking to the right side, airs it out, looking all the way down, wow. incomplete, he had his man down there, Damian Deluzio could not corral it. That ball was perfectly thrown in a double coverage, he had his receiver in stride, actually Deluzio I think got both his hands on it. Yeah. And it was just, I mean, about head high and maybe, I don't know. 
What a throw. What, 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 what a beautiful ball that was. Yeah. Yeah. Perfectly placed and got there in a hurry. It was beautiful, yeah. Going to be fourth down now. East Hampton most likely going to have to punt this away. Aaron Landry will go back to around his 30-yard line to get the boot. Again, we're assuming they're going to punt. They're only on their own 36-yard line. And you have eight yards to go. Yeah, too early in the game to gamble here. Yeah, that is their punting unit on the field, by the way. Yeah, down by, uh, up by two points. 14, Ben Landry, back to punt for East Hampton. Aaron back Landry. to punt is Landry, and he's punting to Landry, huh. our frontier. Snap back. Here comes Frontier. He got it away and he kicked it away from Aaron Landry. Aaron, though, is going to track it inside the 30. He'll back away. It takes a little oh, bit of a Frontier kick to the 33. Right First down and 10 right, for the Hawks the there. 15.6 seconds left here in the quarter. They trail 8 6. Yeah, again, so far for the Red Hawks, just four plays. Well, that was all that they needed. Three carries by Worthley. He got the touchdown score. Just 14 yards for him. It was Aaron Landry's big run from the 48 yard line. 44 yards that put him in that position. So again, four carries, 58 yards, first drive and into the end zone. All right, so Frontier now, again moving left to right here in the opening quarter, which is about to expire here. Woodruff Thunder Center, first and 10 from the 33. And the inside give is going to go to Aaron Landry. Aaron Landry. Landry. East Hampton was there, but he bounces to the outside and makes a gain of a couple anyway. Yeah, it looked as though he was going to get stuffed in the backfield. And actually, he's going to end up with about three on the carry, so another good effort by Aaron. Again, right uh, with his opening carry on the opening drive, he eclipsed 1,000 yards for the season. That's the end of the first quarter here in South Deerfield on the car quest of Greenfield. South Deerfield and Shelburne scoreboard. It's East Hampton 8, Frontier 6, the second quarter. Next on Bear Country, 95.3. Frontier, after getting kind of shredded on that opening drive of the game, a very lengthy drive, which resulted in a touchdown for East Hampton. They got a nice three and out there, and now we'll see if they can get down the field again. Yeah, and again, you uh, didn't get to see them on a sustained drive. East Hampton had the ball for six minutes. Frontier scored with four plays from the 48-yard line. This is quarter. second down and seven here second for the Hawks. Seven. And it's going to be Stephen Wordley. He'll take the inside Steve carry, Wordley. and he has the Harry first Wordley down Red up to the 45-yard line. To the Red Hawk 45-yard line. And again, part of the problem is actually finding Steve. You know, they use that little misdirection, and again, he's only 5'6", and sometimes it's kind of hard to figure out that he has the ball. Well, with Aaron Landry's 1,000 yards tonight, he'll uh, have his name on that banner two consecutive years. We don't see that too often. We saw it in Turner's Falls last few years. With, yeah, uh, saw that a lot. With uh, Trent Borbo and... Uh, Hildreth will give this time to uh, Landry on the Aaron Landry, and Aaron takes it across the 45-yard line to the 47-48. Second down coming up. I'll give him a gain of about, let's see where they marked that. Give him four yards there, 51 total for him now on three carries. But to finish that thought, uh, Aaron Landry will have his name on that banner twice, and you, know, you very rarely see teammates rush for 1,000 yards in the same season. Uh, so that would be kind of cool, and again, uh, we take a look at uh, Worthley. Stephen Worthley came in with 709 yards on the season. I think he'll get there. Uh, you know, three games, 100 per. And uh, right now he's got himself 22, so he's on his way. Worthley in motion, but the inside give will go to Bryce Dobis. Bryce Dobis he's one of the seniors that was honored here tonight. And he brings it for a couple right around to the midfield stripe. Oh, we'll call it the 49-yard line. Third down coming up. Yeah, we've not seen a lot of Bryce Dobis really all season long. He came out in week one and had a, a, a big, big week. He got nicked up in that one. And really, he's been used most primarily as a blocking back. And uh, he really only had, we've only seen him have a couple carries a game. Wordley will come off here. Dobis will stay out there. So now I think Dobis is going to swing. Uh, no, that's not Landry coming off. Uh, Wordley. That's Steve Wordley coming off. So... 
We'll see, Dobus now will probably be one of the wings here. Yeah, he'll go into a slot left. And Blight is the fullback. Dobis comes in motion. He will take it on the right side. Bryce looking good here. Cuts to the outside. He's got a first down in. And you're right, Sean. What a luxury that is for Don Gordon. You just have multiple running options. Well, you know, again, you got the two guys, Landry and Wordley, and then you knew Dobis was coming to Frontier this season. Again, he rushed for 1,000 yards at Pioneer last year. And, um, you know, that's not a, a small feat. Came in here to join this, this squad here, and uh, yeah, it's been uh, kind of a quiet season for, for Bryce, but you know what? Fresh legs now. If he hasn't run a lot, he could be uh, the quickest guy on the field right now. Dobis will take it again on the right side. He He's got the first and a more spin move into the secondary, and Bryce Dobis has announced that, yeah, I'm on this field right now, too. 27 yards, three carries for Bryce. Yeah, that's more carries than we've seen him in any single game we've broadcast this season for the Hawks. Ball down just outside the 30-yard line. First down and 10 for the Hawks. Clock in motion, 8.35 to play here in the first half. It is East Hampton 8 and Frontier 6. Wordley back out there, Dobas to the bench. Wordley lined up on the left side. Steve will take it right now, and he ends up in the secondary as well, still going. Again, it's just, it's no frill, Sean. They just run right at you and say, try to stop us. And until you do stop that, they're not going to stop running it, and then they might keep running it anyways, because that's what they do. And game of seven there for Wordley. So, yeah, yeah, again, that's what makes it so hard to defend. They pack that tight, and... Uh, they, these guys are, are quick and strong, and they're able to get through. And it's amazing how many yards they get on some of these plays, but it's always forward momentum, and they get to the yards at the end of the play. 23-yard line, the pitch. This will be Landry this time, and Aaron gets tripped Aaron up Landry. as he comes through. Yeah, Aaron, Aaron brought it down to Aaron the 20. The chain game first wants down. to move, but they're going to hang on for now. No, they will get a first down. Oh, looks like oh, still well. Kind of they're going to look at it here and see. It's going to be close. Now they're going to bring him back just a little bit. Well, he. What's happening? <laughs> One guy, the guy that's on the back end of the chain gang. There we go. Yeah, it was, was it was a first down. Yeah, he's holding his spot just to make sure. Right, exactly. Well, they tell you to do that yeah. because you absolutely have to wait till the official. I used to work on the chain gang at uh, uh, freshman football games way back in the day, and yeah, they, he would say, "Do not move until I tell you to move." Absolutely, it's like the ball boy catching the ball that goes fair, and then you know. Oh that, yeah. Oh, oof. oh sorry. Uh, yeah. And it's Hildreth, fakes the handoff. He'll take it himself, his first rushing attempt. He's got another first down, gets popped. Oh, the ball popped out here as he got hit. And who came up with it? Did Frontier keep it? Looks like they did. But he had the first down on the, on the gain, uh, close to it, but then the ball popped out, and then he lost yardage on that. But... You know, going to the book says a gain of about six. six Hildreth four. not really, I would say, known as being a running quarterback this season, but he's had some very good games. He actually had nine carries for 71 yards against Greenfield. And he's got 166 yards on the season, 26 carries. So when he runs the ball, he has some success. 14-yard line, they go to Dobas. Big hole on the right Dobis. side. He's inside the five, still going. And he gets down inside the five-yard line. First down, Red Hawks. Let's see where they spot Bryce. Again, he's a senior, 5'11", 170 pounds. First and goal for and here. Now, Worthley will come in for Dobis. So, yeah, they can keep fresh legs out there, obviously. Right about the two-yard line, yard looks like, huh? It's not a case of, uh, yep, balls right around the two or three. We'll call it the three. First down and goal from there as Frontier looks to take their first lead of the night. Hildreth. We'll give to Wordley. I don't think so. On the right side. And he got down to around the two, but did not get into the end zone just yet. So, band. I know they want to play the school fight ready. song, getting but ready. not quite yet. <laughs> Wordley had five touchdowns. We mentioned that already against Mahar. Well, remember, it, the game against Mahar, didn't, didn't Frontier lose the ball down here? Um, they were driving for a touchdown. I think they did turn it over down um, there. Maybe. Hildreth will keep it this time on the right side, and he is close. Did he get in? No. Right around the one. No, a late call touchdown. touchdown. Oh, it was Wordley? Oh, it was Wordley. Okay. I thought Hildreth had kept it. It was Steve Wordley. Takes it in from a couple of yards out. It is 12A, and now a very important two-point conversion. 
coming up here, trying well, to make it a six-point game. I believe that would have been Hildreth's first rushing touchdown of the season. I don't think he has one, the quarterback, but turns out it was Stephen Worthley. We just talked about his five-touchdown game against Maher. He has nine on the season. Adam had one more to ten, and here goes the two-point conversion try. And they're going to give it on the left side, and that's Aaron Landry, and he dives towards the cone. No, they say he did not get in. Very close, but no. All right, time out of the field. 5.36 to play here in the first half on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne Falls scoreboard. It is now Frontier 12, East Hampton 8. Jacob Bryant to kick off for the Red Hawks. Ish Akinor. Quentin Baker to Cyril back for the Eagles. Back inside his own 10 yard line. And then he gets stood up. Horrible job that time by the Eagles as they're going to be looking at a long field now, the ball back near their 20 yard line. Well that Jacob went right Brandon through the wickets of the, of the, of the intermediary ten. guy. There was somebody in front of him that went to field it. It went right He's five happened. hole and then all of a sudden the ball's bouncing down around your 10 yard line and yeah, nearly a disaster. Turns out just to be a bad play right there and we'll see where they spot this thing but not going to be very good starting field position here. Yeah, they haven't put the ball down yet, but it looks like right around the yeah, right on the 20 yard line. So first and 10 for line. the Eagles, 528 left to play here in the first half. The Greenfield Savings Bank High School Football Halftime Report is coming up during intermission. We'll recap this first half and let you know what's happening elsewhere tonight and tomorrow in high school football, including that Turner's Tech game that we'll have for you here on Bear. On first down. Left side, not a lot there. We'll see who just got stood up there. That was Helms on the carry. That was Dave Helms, number 10. And really, not much no of anything. Oh, no no gain, second and 10. Yeah, I can move it, mark, mark it back just a touch, but. I go to the air here, Sean. Uh, I would seriously think about uh, that kid's got a big arm and you got fast receivers. I tell you what, he's four for five, and, and the five was one that it was a bullet and was thrown real well. I mean, I could have, could have, yeah. should have cut caught, really. But listen, I understand that you want to establish the run because it makes it a whole heck of a lot easier, but I like that quarterback. I like what he can do with that arm. He's back to pass now. Sets up. Deep ball on the left side. Look at that throw, and it is incomplete. That could have been caught as well. The guy who caught the touchdown earlier, Baker Cicero, very upset he didn't call that one in. Uh, again, I, it hit both of his hands, and if the football hits both of your hands, and uh, generally you wanted to come up with that catch. And again, though, I mean, he's in stride, two guys on him, and the ball is just put exactly where he, only he could get to it. That, that's awesome right there. That's a great throw for a high school quarterback. This kid's just a junior. Third down and 10. Yeah, I mean, and again, there's all kinds of different high school quarterbacks. You get kind of the short guys. You get the guys who are look more like a prototypical quarterback. Pellegrini is the latter for sure. Yeah, tall, lean, big arm, like you said, kind of gangly, but the long arms and legs, and yeah, deliver a ball. Nick Pellegrini, set a man in motion. That is Davio, takes the snap. No nope, inside give, and it goes for a big gain. This is Hellum setting downfield. Has oh, the first oh, 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 the 40-yard line, and he got down. popped. Well, I think and he actually Landry did the pop it on that, but yeah. 20 yards downfield, he just ran somebody over. Down. That was Aaron Landry. Yeah. Sure. 40 -yard line. And Landry's, you know, got decent size for a high school kid, but a big play there on third and 10, and it's a first down off to the 40-yard uh, line. Yeah. That's a 20-yard gain there. 20-yard gain there. Hellum's had 22 yards prior to that, so six carries now, 42 yards for Hellum's. That one was... Again, the quarterback was coming to the right. Everybody else came with him. Helms went left and sprinted 20 yards. 4-10 to play here in the half. 12-8 in favor of Frontier. The inside give to Helms, but Frontier Helms waiting for the big loss. Landry. 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 Dobis coming up to meet him. Also helping out was number 32, Sam Hebert, sophomore. Going to be a little loss on that loss one. Of the yard will be second and 11. Yard. Yeah, Four momentum uh, got him back to around the 38, 39 yard line. Clock continues to roll, 3.42 to play 
in the half. Frontier 12, East Hampton 8. Yeah, Pellegrini has had some pretty good games throughout this season. Against Franklin Tech, he was 5 of 7 for 113 yards through a couple of touchdowns. Actually ran three times for 91 yards as well, so a big game in that one for him. Passing-wise, though, 129 yards against Greenfield and 134 in the last two weeks. Deluz Deluzio comes to the near side right. Receiver up top on the left. Is Akinardo a swing pass out of the backfield? And that is caught by Helms. Does a good job to evade the tackler. Takes off left side, has the first down around yeah, midfield the in the frontier territory down near the 40 yard Matt line of the Hawks. That's 20 good yards for, uh, again. So Jerry just down. ripping them off in chunks now. 20 on the ground, now 20 first through the air. From the Red Hawk, 40 yard line. John, I'll say this right now. We'll talk more about this at halftime. But if Pellegrini throws say 25 times tonight and some of his receivers start catching the ball. East Hampton should be able to match Frontier. Uh, he's five of seven and the two were balls that were uh, bombs that would could, could have and should have been caught I think. Again, yeah. tough catches to make because that ball's coming in hot and, and they were defended well but well thrown balls that were catchable for sure. Two very different offensive approaches here tonight. First and ten for East Hampton from the Frontier 40 to 38 to play here in the half. Out of the pistol formation. Handoff goes on the left side. Helms on a carry. Tackle, and that's uh, Dave Helms, and he brings it for a gain of around four. Second down coming up. We would see an Akinow earlier in this game. He had a bunch of carries early, but not much success. Uh, net, net, four carries and no yards. So we've seen Helms with all, all right, of the ball carrying the since Reynolds. then. Now eight Time carries, 45 yards for him. Hampton. Timeout on the field. And it looks like a full timeout here. No, it's taken by East Hampton. We'll keep it right here. Dave Reno, I know you were going to. He had the finger on the button. He had he the finger ready. on the button, or, or he actually has his hand on the mouse to oh, click. On the mouse. That's how we do it these days. That's I see. I don't know. Everything's on computers now. So. Technology stuff. <laughs> Hold the phone, Dave. Here's we're going to. Just saying. Uh, ball's on the 36 of Frontier now after this timeout taken by the Eagles. Yeah, good timeout again. 2.16 to play here in the half. So real time, not really a factor. They'd used a timeout early. Remember at that first run by Aaron Landry. They burned a timeout, tried to collect themselves defensively. So that is the uh, second timeout that they have called. So they got three more. Two minutes, 16 seconds, and three timeouts. Baker Cicero, Akenauer comes to the near side right. Deluzio there as well. Helms the lone back. Coming in motion is Davio. They fake it to him. He's going to throw it deep along the left sideline, down inside the 10. And it is batted away. Back Landry is on the coverage. 13. Intended receiver, Baker Cicero. Baker. It'll be third down. Well, that could be the first ball thrown. That wasn't really a ball that should have or could have been caught. There were a couple of defenders there, and he just got <laughs> swarmed. There was no way he was getting back to that ball. I tell you, Sean, I'm smiling here because even when he throws a ball that's not caught, he just he throws such a nice spiral and just uh, yeah, I, I like the way he sets it uh, up too. The ball just kind of slings out of his hand and just seems like it picks up speed as it's going through and it's not going, it's like a lollipop. It's not taking a big rainbow approach to get there. He throws it pretty directly. Deluzio to the near side right wide and a slot right is Akinau. Low snap, they fake it. It's going to go back to uh, David Helms on the right side. Helms Didn't get on the, the first down, but he got a little bit close. It's fourth down Matt now. Hawkins exactly two minutes to play here in the half. Well, I would say this is four down territory here. Uh, no doubt about it. So now, Open you know, the time, uh, 153 and rolling. From the Red Hawks, uh, Obviously, it's imperative to get this first down for if you're East Hampton. And for the Red Hawks, I don't know. Might have wanted to burn a timeout. They stopped him on this play. They had a lot of time. Clock still rolling, 140. That's right, yeah. Um, you know, I guess if you had the faith in your defense to take the time out, stop them here on fourth and two. They'd have had about two minutes left, but clock at 131 still rolling. Now under center this time is the quarterback, Nick Pellegrini. He's going to take it himself up the middle. They oh, stood him up and blew him back. I don't think he got there no, either. No, he did Pellegrini not. Pellegrini on the carry. Uh, there's no way. I don't think he did. And uh, again, had Frontier burned a timeout before that play, they would have had another half a, half a minute on the clock. Yeah, it's 120 right now. The officials are going to take a look at it. Frontier says you don't need to take a look at it. He I didn't get it. Uh, UB says you don't have to take a look at it. I don't think he got it. I just got uh, yep. yeah. 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 it. Not even going to bring the chains out. No. And look at Bryce Dobos. He was in on that stop. He is, he is pumped. He's been in on the last couple of stops. And I'll tell you what, if he hadn't been healthy in the last few weeks, he looks healthy right now. He's been looking really good tonight. Yeah. yeah. And again, it's been a tough year for Bryce with the uh, – Injury that he uh, sustained early on and trying to battle through that. 
and not, not being the top dog like he was last year up at uh, Pioneer. Well, he's got an energy tonight that you can see. Yeah, good to say. He can finish his senior year strong here. Yep. All right, so the ball now, 31 yard line of Frontier. They only have a minute 20 to work with though. But again, they have guys who can take it to the house at uh, any moment. They can do it in seconds, yeah. First down and 10. And the handoff. Aaron Landry runs over two tier. It takes off on the left side, still Aaron going. Landry That's what we just talked about inside. East Hampton territory, the 45-yard line, and they stop the clock with a minute and 11. That play should have gone for about four yards. You know, Landry just ran over the corner and then tiptoed down the sideline. Fast, tough, 25 more yards for Landry. I can't wait to watch this game on FCAT. Um, so I can watch some of these plays we've seen already. And yeah. that's, one, that's one play I want to see. Yeah, he, he did. Uh, he ran right over. That the play should not have been 25 yards. Ran him right over. First down and 10 from the 45. Wordley comes in motion. Hildreth back to pass. Throws over the middle. Wide open. Oh. Incomplete. Oh. It was a high pass. Looking for Landry. It goes incomplete. And there was a great block back there by Dobis as well. That was, I saw him throw the block. Hildreth had plenty of time. The receiver was open. And. You know, coach, you only let me throw it like twice a game. <laughs> it was funny. He was coming back to get the play from, uh, from Don Gordon. He came back and you can see he's like, oh, no, almost, he, almost he had that there. one. It really was. Again, the, other, the, the play was well executed and a uh, ball just a touch overthrown. But again, he didn't get to throw it too often. He's a little excited there. Second and 10 from the East Hampton 45, Hildreth. And this time the handoff is going to go to Aaron Landry. Landry on a carry. And Aaron takes it inside the 40 down to the 38-yard line. And Landry on a stop. And timeout called stop by the, the Red clock. Hawks. The Hawks call Second the timeout. Time out uh, it's a quick, quick break. We'll keep it here. 57.2 seconds left. It'll be third down at about four. Yeah, the Red Hawks still have third three timeouts to use. So four for Frontier. Just under a minute. First down, Marcos at the 35. Well, the scoreboard's not getting lit up the way we thought, but both offenses are operating pretty effectively up and down the field. They're you know, consuming time and eating up yards. And um, again, with East Hampton mixing up the pass and the run very effectively. Frontier's just gonna run at you, we know that. So far, that was the first pass Hildreth had thrown in this game. 38 yard line of East Hampton. Third down and four. Wordley, hands off, no, it's a play action. It is caught by Blight on the right side, has the first down inside the 30-yard line, or right around the 30-yard line. They'll move between 49 seconds. Now, this is plenty of time for the Red Hawks. Uh, plenty of time, plenty of timeouts as well. Just take your time. And again, well executed there, the double the inside handoff. They fake the double inside handoff, and Hildreth rolls back to the right. And the Red Hawks take a timeout. And we'll see if this is a full break. Looks like it will not be. No, we will step aside for the break. 43.4 seconds left in the half. Park West of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard. It is Frontier 12 and East Hampton 8. Again, halftime will be entertained by the Red Hawk Band and the Frontier football parents are selling 50-50 raffle tickets. As always, they thank you for your generous support. Brought you. Thank all of our sponsors on there. Yeah, it looks like uh, it looks like Boost does. I think Denny's on all the broadcasts. Denny's a good um, guy. And uh, his son Cody had one heck of a summer Boy, on the links. It's fun he, to watch, he, huh? He went through a period where he was just on fire. Yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> I didn't get to watch him personally, but yeah, I saw some pictures where his dad was his daddy, and yeah. uh, great experience. Played some great golf. Fun to watch. Fun to read about. First down and ten. 
Hildreth pitches to Landry. Landry a relatively carry. short gain for Aaron. He's rarely caught behind. Garelli on a stop for the Eagles. Uh, only a gain of a couple there. Had two calls play. Yeah, that two plays called. They're nine. not going to take a timeout. Going to run play here. Going to go no huddle. 27 seconds left. Hildreth. And hands off again to Landry. He'll take it on the left sideline. Still going, and he's got a first down and out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Inside the 15-yard line, first down. Ball will be around the 14, and it'll be first and 10. 19 seconds left now here in the half. Yeah, again, Aaron Landry is just so smart too, and he, he knows okay the clock's rolling, and I want to get as many of these yards as I can. He's so good with that little stutter step. Guys are reaching out his ankles and his legs. He's able to just kind of move his feet so he doesn't lose his balance and. Gets out of bounds with 19 seconds left in the half. Dobas in for Wordley. Dobas now will come in motion. He will take it, bounce to the outside, Dobas but a great defensive carry. play there by the East Hampton man. Frontier's got to call a timeout with 12 seconds Time left. As uh, number 60 was able to come up the defensive tackle and wrap up his legs. And there is a timeout on the field. I'm assuming they had to be taken by Frontier. Yep. We'll take the break. 12.9 seconds left in the half car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard. It's Frontier 12, East Hampton 8. Albert B. Allen Insurance broadcast booth at Frontier Regional in South Deerfield. Remember, Scarecrow in the Park happening tomorrow Second all day long Red in Burdickson, Cushman Park. Matt Gregory will be there broadcasting live 11 to 1. It's your latest sign-up location in the Kringle Candle $5,000 giveaway. Playback on now. 12 seconds left in the half. Got Second him. down. He's got the pass. Man wide open in the end zone. Freeman! Oh, touchdown! Man. Wide open. No one Aaron anywhere near him. You could see him from a mile oh, away. Man. He was streaking oh, towards the right corner. Nobody around him. That was an easy throw for Hildreth. He tosses it perfectly into the end zone. Well, the Red Hawks get the ball. A couple minutes left. No problem. 18-8 now, Hawks with the extra points pending here. Seven seconds left in the half. Yeah, it was right in the arms of uh, Kieran Freeman. He just had to just wrap it up. He had no, no one anywhere near him. It's about as easy as it gets. But again, you know, when you run the ball that well so many times, it really sets it up. Seven, They're going to kick Hildreth. now here. Hildreth will kick for the conversion. Placement down, and the kick is on its way. Looks good from here. Kick is it good. is good. Seven more for the Red Hawks. They lead it now, 19 Seven seconds remaining in the first half. The Red Hawks, 21. We're going to keep it right here. Sean, that was some. Um, they score, but not 19, the way that we expected. Eagles. Nope, not at all. And again, we talked about Hildreth not really throwing a pass until just a few minutes left here in the first half. He threw an incomplete pass, but coach said, sorry, kid, let's go get another one. He's thrown a couple of passes now on that one right there again. Uh, that's just a blown coverage a as well. That's just somebody back there the made a mistake for East Hampton. And... The Red Hawk is just running He's through the back of the end zone all by himself. And Hildreth did his job, got him the ball. Quinton Baker Cicero back for the Eagles. Baker Cicero is the deep man for the uh, Akenauers back there as well, back around their 20-yard line, to get the boot from Bryant. And he kind of hits a line drive, and it's jumped on. That's a good job not to kick, covered kick up it by deep. 14, ben Landry, and uh, now 6.5 seconds left here, and we will see yeah. if the kid <laughs> with the big arm just senses, he uh, just says, like in the schoolyard, go deep, I'll this, hit you. Yep, this will <laughs> be the one where everybody's just going to run as fast as they can. We'll see a couple of Red Hawk defenders. The safety should be probably 30 yards off the yeah. line of scrimmage, I, I would think. I would think so, yeah. Um, they're not going to let anybody get behind them, and... You know, yeah. It's going to be uh, probably be thrown deep. Although, hey, you know what? If Frontier's thinking they're going to throw deep, maybe they do something underneath and try to squeeze one in that way too. So, but one play here, six and a half seconds to go in the half. East Hampton down, nineteen to eight. Well, you know, Sean. Well, my second favorite pass play is other than the, the deep bomb, the screen, the screen. Yeah. Especially at this level, because if you have a team that executes it, it's it's so effective. It, it will work for big yardage almost every time. 
All right, first down and 10 from uh, 35-yard line. Davio comes in motion, back to pass Pellegrini, and he's in big trouble, sack. and he is sacked. And that's how the half will end. Frontier comes up with the sack. So after a rough first drive, when East Hampton ran right down the field into the end zone, I'm gonna hold the phone here. We may not be done with the half, because East Hampton's going to say that they want to get their final timeout with a couple of ticks left, or at least. Either they're gonna say there's the time expired, they're gonna put a second on, or I didn't see a flag, and obviously the half can't end on a defensive penalty, so. Right. Um, okay, yeah, you're right. It was a defensive penalty, so. That's 15, too, he's penalty marking off. Penalty the Red Hawks will be uh, an rough. untimed down for the Eagles. Yeah, from where it happened, so. That's a 15 yard. They had to be a roughing, a, and, a, a personal foul. And you're right, the half can't end. Now, yeah, I never saw an official take his hat off. That's the, the official signal. The officials look at each other. They say, you're good, you're good. Yeah. Okay, they take the hat off, and that means uh, the half of the game is over. Never saw a flag either, though. So uh, now there's the scoreboard is showing zero. So this will be the last play of the half, unless there is another defensive penalty or a touchdown. And yeah, look how far back the safeties are for Frontier. 25 yards behind the uh, line of scrimmage. And they're going to go for a little draw go, play, yeah. and it's Peck on the left side, and he's got the first down, but not nearly so in the end zone. So a nice little shot there, trying to catch the Frontier the unaware. Did not work, but they gave him a shot. Halftime here in South Deerfield on senior night. It's been a good one so far for the Red Hawks. They lead East Hampton 19-8 on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard coming up. The Greenfield Savings Bank High School Football Halftime Report on Bear Country 95.3. Financial support for FCAT's coverage of local high school sports provided by Leader Home Centers, your hometown home center with five locations to serve you in Amherst, South Deerfield, Barry, Greenfield, and Brattleboro, Vermont, or online at leaderhome.com. Visit them for all your building material needs. Raymond Financial Services, LLC. Take charge of your financial future. Insurance, investments, and benefits for individuals and employers. Attorney Daniel Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan's a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs. Good evening, Frontier fans. It's now time for the Frontier Band's halftime entertainment. It's the Red Hot Sound Band of the Frontier Regional School Band. It's the under the direction of Max Sherrill. So tonight our band has a whole new set of tunes for you. And since the football team is playing the East Hampton Eagles, the band figured they'd play the Eagles too. So tonight's show features three songs by the 70s rock band, the Eagles. Tonight's tunes include Already Gone, Desperado, featuring solos by juniors Phelan Koski, Sebastian Richards, and Emily Loss. And they close with Heartache Tonight. So how about a great hand for the band?
Bubble BL Insurance broadcast booth here at Frontier Regional. Jeff Terrell, Sean Hubert, studio producer is Dave Reno. 19-8, East Hampton over Frontier. First place versus uh, second place. Been a pretty good ball game, but Frontier really assumed dominance uh, midway through the first quarter. Yeah, you know, East Hampton had that really impressive opening drive where they, uh, they ate up about six minutes off the clock and uh, ended up punching that into the end zone. And there was the Red Hawks answered with four plays and into the end zone. And that, that's kind of been their quick strike offense and how they've done that all year long. But uh, again, both teams with sustained drives a little bit later in the game. Frontier with a nice drive. Uh, again, you take a look at what they do and, and the way they run the ball, tough to stop. And then you throw in Hildreth, and all of a sudden, Matt Hildreth, he's going to throw a couple passes a game. He was 0 for 1, and boom, boom, you got two passes, you're in the end zone 30 yards later. So, uh, obviously, a, a couple of plays where Frontier, uh, or excuse me, East Hampton was not expecting a pass play. A couple of wide open guys there for him to hit, and, uh, you know, they got a lot going on right now. Tough to stop. East Hampton, they're just going to have to come out. Uh, a little bit better defensively in the in the second half if they're going to want to try to climb back into this one. I'll tell you what, though, we uh, I know the idea with these Frontier kids is is to win the game, but Wordley's been scoring touchdowns at an incredible clip this year, and Wordley over a thousand yards did it as a junior, did it as again as a senior. I can't remember what he had his sophomore year, but he, he you know we he we've been tracking him for these last several years. Yeah. You know, he's a tremendous running back, and the offensive weaponry that they have, I, I know what, what it's about here at Frontier. They want to win. They want to get into November where they play a tournament game. You know, they've drawn some tough road teams out of the Berkshires in the postseason, and they haven't fared very well. But you, you know that that's their main goal. But when you do talk numbers, it doesn't get much better than what they do. Well, and I thought it was interesting just looking over the numbers that Aaron Landry leads the team in receptions as well. He's got seven receptions for 99 yards, but he hasn't caught a ball in the last three weeks, so they really haven't thrown to him at all. Stephen Wordley only has one reception for the whole season. One, he caught one 30-yard pass. Uh, it was against Mahar, and that's the only ball he's caught. So you got the two guys out of the backfield that aren't a weapon. You're not going to throw to them much, and uh, but you don't have to. You know, get a couple other guys you can hit with the pass. Those guys are going to focus on running out of the backfield. They could mix that back in. They could throw to Landry four or five times all of a sudden and change things up. But uh, stick with what works. And right now, the running game works for them. Frontier 19, East Hampton 8 here at halftime in this big showdown game. This is just the start of a very big weekend of football here on Bear Country. We have a high school game tomorrow afternoon. The Patriots on Sunday night. We'll talk about it as the Greenfield Savings Bank high school football halftime report rolls on from South Deerfield. This is Bear Country 95.3.
other games happening tonight locally. We got the Greenfield Green Wave. Losers of two in a row. They were idle last week. We're trying to get back on the winning track. They're at one in five at all tonight. And Hubie, you have an update. I do. What do you think? <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> I am <laughs> done <laughs> predicting <laughs> these local <laughs> games because I'm wrong every time. I'll say Greenfield. You'll say Greenfield. Like it it is halftime and it is 20 to 6. Them to their wow. So like right uh, there you go. Uh, uh, we talked about it. You know, again, Athol uh, playing better ball UMass. now and uh, they started slow. They were supposed to be one of the one of the better teams and uh, playing better ball now. And according to uh, Gary Sack, who was there. Uh, Greenfield having trouble two, tackling so is, is the information I'm getting. So it sounds Saturday like uh, the Red Raiders have a little bit of running. Uh, Greenfield uh, going to have to come from behind if they're going to come back and win this when they're down 20 to 6. So Athol will not be part of the postseason. Obviously, they were kind of eliminated uh, before we can get out of September. Really, but yeah. you can finish strong. You can uh, you know you can knock off Greenfield here. They have a, the second game against Mahar uh, coming up later on this year. We'll see how the Red Raiders finish up this year. We'll, we'll get more updates on Greenfield Athol because they're just at halftime as well. Where is that Mohawk up in uh, at Pollard Field in Buckland? Mahar home against Mount Greylock. Let's talk about tomorrow's games. Uh, first, again, that we have for you here on Bear Country, Turner's Falls, Franklin Tech, two and four Turner's, three and three, Franklin County Tech, the Battle of Powertown. Uh, and two quarterbacks that are starting to get red hot. I mean, you know, Seth Aldridge, uh, he's had a few games where he's thrown the ball a bunch, and then he's had some games where they don't throw much at all. In last week's game, he threw it. He threw it effectively. He ran. He operated the offense extremely well. Uh, they ran the ball, and obviously they played defense well enough to win. Took a big lead over Athol and uh, ended up pulling on by a score at the end. But uh, and as for Turner's fall, dodgy. I mean, that kid just uh, lit it up last week, 9 of 18, and three touchdown passes, a couple hundred, 60 yards, 50 yards, somewhere around there. And, uh, that was a running team going into that week in my mind, and now Turner's Falls is a passing team, and uh, Tech can go either way. You know, they, they can throw the ball, they can run the ball. I can't wait for that game. It is just going to be a good game. It's going to be fun. People need to start paying a little more attention to this uh, Pioneer Panther team. We weren't really sure about them coming into the year. Of course, we knew that they were going to lose Bryce Dobas, right. who uh, transferred down here to Frontier, a 1,000-yard rusher from last year, but... Uh, Coach Paul Worth, his staff, his kids, they've had a fine year. They're 5-1. and one. They're playing Palmer uh, tomorrow afternoon at home. They win that. I mean, they're right in the thick of conversation for the postseason. They're hurt a little bit with the league that they play in. There's some teams that they're going to be battling who will get more points because of the teams they play. Right. But, hey, you play your schedule, and you, if you win enough games, you'll, you'll, you'll be in. I'll uh, be unapologetic about it. And, yeah, we've had a couple, you know, over the last couple of years, teams that just kind of got inched out by Miller points because of a team that beat another team and, uh, it doesn't look right on paper, but that's what the numbers say, and that's what they go with. And uh, yeah, you know what? I think you know Pioneer in that program and where they are right now. Um, that's coaching. You know, that's uh, these kids. Uh, they love their coach. Uh, they play hard for him. Uh, they buy into his system. And uh, yeah, like I said, they're another team too. They can run the ball. They'll throw in a little bit as well. Uh, it really depends. Again, they, we've seen them uh, games where they kind of showed up, and somewhere they just kind of struggled a little bit too. But five and one overall, and a big win tomorrow would be uh, huge for them. Yeah, where they have really excelled is uh, coming behind late. Uh, we had a game earlier, a couple early of games yep. earlier this year where they were able to do that, and they uh, were able to knock off uh, Ludlow. They were able to knock off Mohawk, both at home with some uh, really good fourth quarter performances. So good for them. We'll see how they fare. It'll be a tough game. The Palmer Panthers come in with a four and two record. Pioneer 5 and 1. Again, we'll have Turner's Falls at Franklin County Tech. 12:45 pregame, 1 o'clock kickoff, live from the Tech School. This has been the Greenfield Savings Bank High School Football Halftime Report. Second half kickoff is coming up next. Frontier 19 and East Hampton 8. Back in the booth here, the Upper B. Allen Insurance Broadcast booth at Frontier. Dave Reno is our studio producer. You are right where you are, either on the road or at home, wherever you are listening to the game. 19-8. In favor of Frontier East Hampton kicking to the Red Hawks, and it is Ben Landry kicking to Aaron Landry and Steve Wordley. Uh, that's Bryce Dobas down there, I think, actually. Here comes the kick. It's taken along the right hash mark by Bryce Dobas, heads to the left, eludes a couple of tackles, then stumbles forward outside the 30 yard line. We spotted down around the 34. First and 10 for the Hawks. Yeah, Bryce certainly has a little spring in his step. And again, ben Landry on the stop. had a real good game the first game. And then uh, he got hurt and really hadn't carried the ball an awful lot. We saw more in this first Hawks half than we've seen any game this year. Five carries, 36 here. yards for Bryce. And all over the place on the line. defensive side of the ball tonight, too. Ball's on the 34-yard line of Frontier. They're moving left to right. So they're moving away from the scoreboard towards the north. And East Hampton moving right to left. 
towards the scoreboard south side of the field. And on first and 10, it is Bryce Dobis again. And he'll bring it out across the 35 to the 37, a quick gain of about three, second down and seven. Carry. Carries were pretty evenly distributed in the first half. Aaron Landry, Jacob eight Ross carries. Stephen Wortley had seven. Eight. Bryce Dobis, that was just his six carries. Four yards, uh, six carry, six. but Landry 104 yards in the first half. Wortley 31 and now 39 for Bryce Dobis. Landry lined up on the right side. Wortley back in now on the left. And the inside give will go to Steve Wordley. Look how fast he is. And he is close to first down yardage. Maybe, well, let's see. Looks like he's getting a pretty good spot. It's right at the marker, which is at the 44-yard line. Want to stop. They will move the sticks. Uh, again, that's what makes this offense so tough to stop is they block Hawks that so well. And, and you've got a couple of backs that are quick and strong, like Landry and Wordley. And now Dobis as well tonight, having a good night. Tough to stop. Ball's on the 45-yard line. I only have one complaint about the Frontier running backs. It's huge for someone like me. I'll no, explain it. No, I, I, I have a huge problem with these guys. Yeah. Stephen Wordley on first down, just a short gain of two from the 45 to the 47, second down the line. Here's my problem with these guys. Dobus, Wordley, and Landry, especially Wordley and Landry. Their Sounds numbers great. are too close Stop together. Yards, yeah. Landry's 29. Uh, rather, Landry's 28, yeah. Wordley's 29, Dobus is 24. Yeah, yeah. And at night, and when they're all bunched in, it's hard sometimes to figure out who the heck has the ball. I need one guy with a single digit, another guy in the 20s, and another guy, say, in the 40s. Well, I think that Landry. would be better. You should write a strongly worded letter. <laughs> <laughs> it is uh, Aaron Landry for uh, no gain. They stop him for uh, no gain. It'll be third down and eight. Or, as I will often say, you find the suggestion box, and if you can't find it, you can go yeah, build it's one. It's too late now. <laughs> they, these guys are in their senior year. But. Well, remember East Hampton, they used to do that with the, the single digits. You'd have all those guys coming out of the backfield. That's one, right, two, yeah. three, four, five, you know. Third down and eight. So East Hampton defensively stiffening up a little bit here. We'll see if they can uh, get a three and out here. Hildreth, a broken play, picks up, he's going to run to the right, oh. picks up a block, but he's going to get ripped down for a big loss. Fourth and long coming up. The ball popped out, but Hildreth was down, according to the official, to be fourth down and long. That play just did not come off very well. No, and I thought I saw a block in the back down there as well, so East Hampton might have got away with one there. Six, seven, six, Eckenauer is going to, back, six, uh, going to two, go one, back deep inside six, his seven, 30 six, or zero. so to get what we expect will be a punt. It's fourth down at about 11 or 12 here. Yeah, going to lose a bunch of yards on that one. Fourth and very long. Yeah, fourth we'll call it fourth and 11. Steve and the boot the gets away. Eckenauer chased back to his this 23. He'll take it on back. the right side. Good downfield Believe coverage. Him. And a nice job there by Freeman to battle him up, uh, bottle him up around the 32. Yeah, Hawks have done a pretty nice job uh, all yeah, season Freeman long, really, on their kick coverage. I don't think I've seen anybody return one on them this season, and they usually get down there pretty, pretty quickly. And right now, uh, East Hampton will set up shop here at about the 34-yard line, East down 19 to 8. Again, East Hampton wins this game, and it's the title for them today. The Red Hawks have to win it. And uh, that keeps them squarely in the mix. Well, whoever wins the league title, I, I will say this, uh, they can be proud of it. It's, it's been diminished now in, in the era of, of the postseason, the four teams. That, that you just really want to be top four in your division. Yep. But still winning a league championship, it's big. Yeah, you get a banner. Pitch, Akinauer, left side, it's turns Akinauer. the corner, and he is run out of bounds in front of the frontier bench right near the stick. Well, the sticks on the far side of the field, but looks like uh, it's either going to be second and very short or first and ten. Well, Ish had had four carries in the first half and netted out with no yards, so his first carry here, and it looks like he's going to go ten yards carry in the first. first yeah, they're going to say first, first down. down. Ball up at the 44-yard line. So much better start to the second half than the first half for Ish Akinauer. Yeah, he was having a tough time there for a while. Yeah. Every time he got the ball, he had Red Hawks all over him. He gained six on his first carry and then went backwards for a while. Yeah, for four carries, he had no yards. Pistol formation. Quarterback Pellegrini. Helms right behind him. Dave Helms will take it right up the gut. Nice Helms hole there. It did close up quickly, but he did bring the ball out across 
the 45, very close to the midfield stripe, second down. Yeah, Hellams had a pretty productive first Brandon half, nine carries and 49 yards, and five, that'll be his five. 10th carry, give him 54 yards now on the game. From midfield. Second down and about six. The ball's on the 49-yard line. East Hampton moving right to left. Third quarter, they trail 19-8, 6.50 to play in the third. And again, quarterback with a big arm, and they're keeping it on the ground right now. Double wideouts on either side. Pellegrini on low snap and picked up by Helms. A nice heads-up play. Gain of one to midfield. That could have been disastrous, but Dave made a good play there. It, it could have been disastrous, and then it could have been brilliant. That's like the, almost the, the old fumble ruski, you know? The ball is just down. It shot directly through the quarterback's legs, and fortunately for him, his back was right there. It was almost it was snapped to him. That could have caused enough misdirection to have gone for a big play. It ended up going for a couple yards, so it could have been real bad, could have been real good, and ended up being a couple yards. Third down and six from the 49-yard line. Scoreboard update from Athol. We'll find out if Athol has increased their lead or if the wave has cut into it. Green Wave got off to a great start, but if they lose tonight, that's three in a row. Out of the shotgun. Pellegrini hands Akinara, shirks off one tackle, takes off right side, first down and more. Inside the 30, 25, 20, down to the 15, 10-yard line, ripped out of bounds, a huge run by Akinara. And they're in the red zone. 42 yards, 52 yards for him, all on two carries here in the second half. Again, four carries in the first half, no yards. Two carries, 52 yards, and East Hampton is now set up shop. It's gonna be yeah. first and goal inside the 10. Uh, just outside the 10, I think is they- just outside? Yeah, it looks from here anyway. Yeah, uh, are, they gonna, are they gonna stretch the chain here? And I mean, it's ridiculous if they they, they won't get a first down because if they do it will be like at the uh like it's, yeah you're right maybe the uh, first and 10 from no, the we'll call it the 11. Hawk, first and 10 line. from the 11 yard line 19 8 frontier but that could change here momentarily pellegrini the quarterback out of the shotgun an hour to his left he's back to pass rolling to the left throwing Dishes at Akinauer, got wrapped up immediately by Dobis for just a short game to the eight. Second down. First pass thrown of the second half. And let's see how many yards he gains on that. Pellegrini had, was five for eight before that throw for 74 yards. And that was going to go for, uh, we'll call it about three yards there. Yep, eight yard line. Second down, seven. Again, they can get a first down at the one. Just inside the one. Clock in motion, 5-12 to play third quarter. East Hampton trails by 11. Reminiscent of their first scoring drive for East Hampton. Again, they're down 19-8. Yeah, good mix on this drive again as well. Pellegrini gives to Helms on the right side. Helms takes it down close to the five yard line. Got pushed back, it'll be third down now coming up. Gain of a couple yards, it'll be third and six. And one of the Frontier defenders a little slow yeah, getting up, but he's okay. He's Truswell that made the tackle. Yeah, he's one of the seniors that was honored here tonight. Senior at 5'10", a buck 80. 4.35 to play, third quarter. We've had no scoring here in the second half. Frontier 19, East Hampton 8. Eagles trying to finish off the drive here. Akinauer and Baker Cicero go to the far side right. Coming in motion is Akinauer. They fake it to him. Back to pass. Swing pass out of the backfield. It is caught by Baker Cicero. A little spin move pass inside the five. Did not get the first down. It'll be fourth down here. Bryce Dovis having a fine night on the stop. Yeah, again, we've, uh, we've seen him make a bunch of tackles tonight. And running the ball just fine as well. Six carries, 39 yards. Timeout called by... East Hampton. East Hampton's going to talk about it. We're going to keep it right here because we don't want to miss this fourth down play. They may be coming back. Did you get that Greenfield update from, uh, from Sacker? I did. Let's see here. Let me make sure there's not another one on top of that one. Gary's, Gary Sack's son, Jake Sack, freshman receiver for Greenfield High School. He's down the ball game there. And, uh, well, we've had two scoring changes. So it was. Wow. 2012. Okay, so Greenf all. Greenfield came... Go a little closer. A little closer. And, and the was, Raiders uh, came right back, right? That was five minutes left in the third. And with four minutes left in the third, 27-12 Athol. So Athol scored a minute later after Greenfield came back to 20-12. to It's now 27-12. Athol, four minutes left in the third quarter there. Right, looking good for the Raiders there. The green wave now. Yeah, starting to 
lose control of their season here. All right, fourth down and about four from the five. Little pitch swing to Akinauer, and he gets decked on the right side. Did not get there. He needed to get to the one, out of bounds. Looks like he did not get there. I think we're going the other way. Yeah, I, I absolutely believe that. He just couldn't quite get to the corner when he got knocked out. I mean, it was going to be close, but... Yeah, first down going the other way. We're going the other way. So, uh, boy, East Hampton, they really needed to get rid of that drive. I thought they were. They were going right down, but uh, great effort there by Frontier. Uh, you know, I have to say, for East Hampton, you come out of the locker room, Frontier gets the ball first with a two-touchdown lead, and, you know, really you have to get a stop there, and then uh, what you want to do is, is score and, and tighten this thing up, and they got the stop, and then uh, looked as though they were going to get the score. So, yeah, again, nice job by the Red Hawks. Uh, just not allowing that to happen. So we'll hold at 19-8 right now, but obviously this is a dangerous position here for the Red Hawks to be in right outside their own goal line, right at the one. First down and 10 from there as they try to get out of the shadow of their goal line. And taking it on the right side, that's C.B. Wordley, and he does a good job to get out to around the 10-yard line. Didn't get the first down, but uh, again, give them a little bit more breathing room. Yeah, again, when the ball is being snapped at your own one-yard line, and there are lots of bad things that can happen. Handing the ball to Stephen Worthley usually uh, takes away a lot of those things, and he's able to get about six yards there. Yeah, get out to around the, uh, right around the eight or the nine yard line. Second down coming up. Clock in motion, three, 12 to play third quarter. Frontier 19, East Hampton eight. Yeah, the last time we said that this scoreboard was going to get a workout, it did. That was the uh, Mahar game, 56-34. And the pitch is going to come to Aaron Landry. Wordley on the carry. Uh, Stephen Wordley, I should say, yeah, 29. Different number. Stop, carry, good for a Red Hawk first Well, one way I've always been able to tell them apart was that uh, Aaron's a little bit bigger than Steve. A little actually. taller, yeah, yeah. A little bit different build. A little taller. Just a little taller, yeah. So it's not, it's not like they're the, the Wonder Twins out there, but they, uh, a lot of times they'll put up matching numbers. That timeout on the field, uh, I think was taken by Frontier. I am not sure. But we're gonna keep it right here. 2.52 to play here in the third. Frontier 19, East Hampton eight. Wanna thank more of the sponsors that are joining us here on the broadcast, Mack and Fuel and Trucking, Wisdom Way Self Storage, Attorney Daniel F. Graves, he's with us all games, Matusco Trailer Repair. Also Hubie's Tavern and Restaurant. We're good friends to Bob and Valley Auction, Coldwell Banker, Upton Massamont Realtors, and of course, Albert Bialin Insurance. Brock and his crew sponsoring our broadcast booth. Wherever we go, whatever booth we're in, it's the Albert Bialin booth. Very much appreciated. All right, first down and 10. And the handoff goes to whom? I don't know, but he didn't get very far. Landry on the carry. Apparently it was Aaron Landry. Gonna lose a couple yards there, actually. Loss of a yard, second and 11. Wow, that's, uh, <laughs> that's really rare. We rarely say a loss for Landry. Not very often at all, no. It, it, even when he gets hit in the backfield or at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, very seldom does he lose yards on a carry. He'll lose a couple yards there. 2.22 to play here, third quarter. Frontier 19, East Hampton 8. All right around the 15-yard line. Wordley slips down and that was Wordley who lost his line. footing in the backfield and he went down. That's going to go for a loss. It's uh, back uh, back inside the 15 now, or right around the 15 yard line. Uh, you know the, the Hawks had it first and first and ten and uh, got out of the, the goal of the, the shadow of their own goal post. Who could like time out here? And we'll take the break. 2.02 to play here in the third quarter on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard. It's Frontier 19, East Hampton 8.
One o'clock. And then the Patriots on Sunday night at home at Gillette against the Falcons. 5.30 pregame and scheduled kickoff time of 8.30. They beat the Falcons last time they played, right? They did. Yeah. <laughs> God, that's never going to get old. No, it's not. Not for a while. <laughs> All right, 202 to play here in the third. Frontier third down in 14. Oh, bad play. Yeah, ball big down. scramble for the yeah, ball. ball. It's down. still loose. It's finally picked up by someone from Frontier on the right side. And this may go. Are you kidding me? Wardley. He's going to take it. Right sideline all the way. He's going to go about 85 yards. Touchdown. Unbelievable. The ball was out. You could see it. It was a bad snap. Hildreth just never got the ball. And it, you know what? It had to get got kicked out of there or something. All of a sudden, Stephen Wardley just picks it up and runs around the right side. And then it was a foot race. And you're not going to beat that guy very often when he's looking at the end zone 85 yards away. That play was a disaster. And it ends up in the end zone. Stephen Wardley. Third touchdown of the night. And that's not a rush, obviously. That was a fumble recovery and return of eight five yards about. Yep. I mean, it's maybe even more than that. Had to be right around there. Yeah, took it to the house on the right side. Oh, that's incredible. Ball was at the 16, right? Somewhere around there, and it uh, ended up on the ground. Yeah, it had to have gotten kicked. I mean, where Hildreth was, and it was just a mass of bodies. Uh -huh. I, I saw so the ball was out. Next thing, it was 10 feet away, and Wordley had it. Seven, Matt Hildreth. And Hildreth kicking out of Wardley's hold, and the kick is good. Timeout on the field. 145 to play here in the third quarter. Frontier has really opened it up. They now lead 26-8 over East Hampton on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard. for Jacob Bryant to kick off. Back to receive for the Eagles, Ish Akador and Quentin Baker Ciceno. And Jacob Bryant now kicking off a short end over end kick. That is a free ball on the right side. It goes out of bounds. That will draw a penalty flag as he was unable to keep it inbounds, and we'll see if there is a re-kick here. Sean's phone is blowing up. Yeah, it's double checking down in Greenfield, see if the green wave is coming back in that one at all. And of course, they were interested in this one here. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, Greenfield, uh, they have a tough time in Athol. Uh, even when they've had some uh, teams where they had a decided advantage, like you would have thought tonight, having a tough time there. I know two years ago, Sean, I was working with uh, Chris Collins, at uh, Greenfield at Athol, we had that game right around this time of year, and like? you had your you had, you had that you had that back situation. That yeah, forever. that was a week of not good. Yeah, okay, yeah, you now. Yep. you were having a tough time. So we had uh, Mr. Collins pinch hitting for you, and we did a game, and Robbie Nelson just went right up and down the field yep. on, on Greenfield. They couldn't get anything going that night. Yep, sounds like Robbie's doing it again tonight. Yep. Yeah, again, you know, again they got off to a slow start, but. You know, he's a senior, some of those other Athol kids. You, you, you make a decision at some point. When you get to this time of year uh, in October and you say, all right, how are we going to finish? We're going to finish strong. We're going to try to win every game, win out, beat our Turkey Day rivals, and then call it a career, or are we just going to say, ah, oh, forget it, and just mail it in? Well, that's why I was so impressed with that win when they went up to Mohawk, 0-4, went in there, played a good ball game. First down and 10 from the 38-yard line after the penalty. Pellegrini is back to pass. We'll see a lot of passing the rest of the way. Looking for Helms, incomplete. Nicely defended down there. Nice job down there by Garrett DeForest. Yeah. Every second down. You know, and again, you can see the receiver. He tries to turn to get the ball. Helms, and that ball zipped right by his ear before he could turn his head. I mean, the ball's just coming at you. You got a defender hanging on you, and that would have been a tough catch to make. Pellegrini is now 7 of 11, passing 83 yards. He has the one touchdown throw and been sacked once. Last play of the first half, I think it was. Oh, boy. Second down and 10. Scoreboard update from Athol. And Sean said, oh, boy. Yeah, oh, boy. 
Out of the shotgun, Pellegrini throwing a deep ball left side. Look at the ball. And the ball sailed nearly out of bounds, incomplete. Fell out of the receiver's hands down at the 35 yard line. He was trying to hook up with the guy that cut the tee. Baker Cicero. You know, it would probably take me five minutes to run that far, but I'd love to try to catch that ball. You know, you just <laughs> see that thing coming in, and look at that ball. That is so well thrown. Uh, Athol, 49 seconds left in the third. 34-12, Athol. 34-12, so they're going to win that one going away. Yeah. Not only is Greenfield uh, losing that one, but they're getting blown out on the road. That's, yep. gonna bring green, that's going to bring the Greenway back to the 500 mark. It's interesting, two weeks ago they played this East Hampton team, uh, which was undefeated in the league at that time, and they were right with them, and they beat this Frontier team in uh, overtime. Yeah. That seems like a long time ago now. Yeah. Again, that Athol team was supposed to be in the same breath with these other two we're talking about. Wasn't the case for the first four games, but yeah, much better ball by Athol now. Third down to 10. Bad pitch. And a pitch, Akinauer, he was play. able to get it, Covered but he's gonna get Akinauer. lost, uh, big, uh, big uh, loss there. Tackle made the there by Stevie Wordley. Yeah, lucky to get that he's ball, Akinauer, that was just a poorly pitched ball. And by the time Akinauer was able to wrap it up, he was getting wrapped up for a loss. Looks like it's going to go about four, uh, yeah, about four yard loss on that play. 48 yards now for Ish Akinauer, eight carries. Greenfield gets Belchertown next week. That'll be a Fourth home game. And then Turner Falls on Turkey Day. They'll have what we now know will be non qualifier games uh, in November. Looks like Greenfield will fall out of uh, playoff contention. Frontier will play Athol next week. It could be a better game than what we uh, thought it actually, maybe uh, yeah, a month when ago. You just said that. That could be a, a pretty good ball game. And and East Hampton gets uh, Turner's Falls at home next Aaron week. Landry we'll have that one for you here on Ben. So we get to go to East Hampton next week. Fourth down. Snap. Oh, a high one. Able to pull it down. And a nice boot. But Landry's going to get a shot from the 30. To the 40. Oh, it's coming back. Yep. And Landry Long took it up to the 45 yard line. Effort. Good effort. Another Second flag late, too. Yeah, he got, he got hit. So let's see here. That's going to be uh, two different penalties against uh, two different teams, I believe. One against the Red Hawks and one against uh, the East Hampton Eagles. And uh, I think they're going to offset two 15-yard penalties. we we'll have to sort this out here. Block in the back and uh, unnecessary roughness, I believe. But we'll let the four guys. I have the hat on, by the way, but I don't have the shirt. See the guys with the shirts? They yeah, I those noticed you, on you have the referee Yeah, I got the referee, uh, the referee hat, <laughs> but I don't get to make any decisions at all. But that's what I would say. Block in the back on the Red Hawks. And a face, face mask, mask. penalties offset. offset. So that last penalty against East Hampton, that was a crushing one because uh, it's going we to give the Red Hawks some really good field position. Oh, no, they're going to do an offset. So Offsetting. We're going to have a, a re-kick here. Yep. So Landry now will go back to, again, around its 30. But it's funny, you could hear the anticipation of the crowd. Landry, because usually they're not used to seeing Aaron even getting a chance Aaron to return to kick away from him. And he got it, and you could hear the crowd wonder what was going to happen. Yeah, you could see him going uh, down the sideline, but then you see the flag behind him, and most folks realize that that right there means whatever he does from then on isn't going to matter. Okay, so it is Ben Landry kicking to Aaron Landry. I have no idea if that's a blood relative out there. I'd like to see him tackle him. That'd be fun. The kick is away. Aaron lets it. Whoa, oh, he won. <laughs> he did to pick it too. Well, again, he's smart, man. He's a smart football <laughs> player. You can just see him chopping, but nah, good move. Good move. Let it, let it, let it, uh, the defender was right there. The ball was at. Nope. Emerson, Emerson Fulton just uh, marked it down there. So it's going to be first down and 10 for the Red Hawks. Ball right around their 32 yard line. We're down to 10 seconds left here, third quarter. And they lead 26 to eight, the, uh, 26 unanswered points. We talked about the scoring that the Red Hawk defense has given up this year and then the quarterbacks that have had their season's best against them. I don't know if this is Pellegrini's season best, but it certainly isn't scoring wise. Only eight points for East Hampton thus far. Hildreth under center. Quick pitch. And it's uh, Aaron, is it Landry or is that Wordley coming up out of the pile? Let's see. That was Wordley. Steven takes it up to around the 40-yard line. And that's the end of the third quarter here. Our score on the contrast of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelby scoreboard. It's Frontier 26, East Hampton 8. Fourth quarter action next on Bear Country 95.3.
Financial support for FCAT's coverage of local high school sports provided by Leader Home Centers, your hometown home center with five locations to serve you in Amherst, South Deerfield, Barry, Greenfield, and Brattleboro, Vermont, or online at leaderhome.com. Visit them for all your building material needs. Raymond Financial Services, LLC. Take charge of your financial future. Insurance, investments, and benefits for individuals and employers. Attorney Daniel Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan's a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs. This broadcast from booth the Frontier, uh, Frontier Regional. It is second down and four as the fourth quarter gets underway. And it's Steve Wordley Steve on the Wordley. right side. A flag comes in, and flag now you got players play. jawing at each other. It's getting a little chippy out there, Sean. It started to a little bit. I saw a couple of little things, and now it's just getting to be a little more frequent. East Hampton starting to feel the frustration coming in here and wanting to get the win, wanting to wrap That's up a league title. Down 26 8 and he's committed a 15 yard penalty, so that's not going to help your cause right there. Well, the Eagles lost to a Berkshire team early on, but then they have a lot of big wins, but they are looking at consecutive decisive losses. They lost to Ware, albeit a very good Ware team, 38 6, and they're trailing here 26 8. And that will go against the Eagles, a 15 yarder. And that'll take it down to the Eagle 43, first down and 10 frontier. Yeah, again, we know they can pile on the points. They scored 52 against Mahar in a shutout, and then they scored 43 against Franklin Tech in a shutout. So 95 points to none over that two-week span. Aaron Landry getting dragged down by the shirt, still going. He will not go down, and he brings it all the way down to the And there's another flag. Another flag comes down. 15-yard gain for Landry if it stands. East Hampton's defenders are saying it's going to go against the guys in the red and blue here. And in fact, it will. On the Hawks, so wave off that fine run by Aaron Lanza. Yeah, they, again, tonight they haven't had penalties that have really hurt them too badly, but a bunch of penalties last week at Turner's Falls in that win, and now five penalties, uh, excuse me, four penalties, 35 yards against the Hawks. So the ball brought back First to the 50. From the 50 yard line. And the ball will be, uh, yeah, right at the midfield stripe. First down and 15. 10 25 to play in the game. Frontier leading comfortably. They like to really put this one out of reach. It's uh, on the fringe of being out of reach right now. One more score, it's lights yeah, out. Yeah, they're up by 18 right now. This play is blown up in the backfield. Ends up back in the hands of Matt Hildreth. He's got a big gainer on the right side, and he may have the first uh, I think down. He got all 15 of them and then some, yeah. yeah. That was a busted play. He went to hand that ball off inside, and all of a sudden, he was the only guy standing there. And I thought I saw a flag in the backfield, but it was a leaf. We're, that, we're at that time of the year now where sometimes we see leaves and we oh. think of their flags. Hey, you try looking for a golf ball lately? <laughs> Holy cow. I know, yeah. Not that I'm complaining. <laughs> Are you, are you, let me ask you this. Are yeah. you are you good yet, Sean? I'm, I'm not yet, no. Yeah, come on, man. No. You've been golfing no. all summer yeah. and into the fall. Not yet. On the left side. That's going to be a big This guy's good, though. Look at him go. He's going to bring good. it inside the 10-yard line, Aaron Landry. And he, he, again, he, he didn't just creep up and pass 1,000 yards. He's yeah, blown no, right through he, uh, Yeah, that was with play from the 30 down to... Inside the five, with a chunk of 25 right there. Yeah, ball, ball's right at the uh, nine yard line. Uh, 127 yards. Timeout on the field, we'll step aside. 9.27 to play in the football game. Car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard. It is Frontier 26, East Hampton 8.
we understand he uh, suffered a leg injury of some sort in that game against Athol. Not sure when it happened, not sure what he did, but now he had, he had uh, 57 yards, I believe, yeah. he was away from 1,000. He ran for 1,000 last year, and uh, we fully expected he'd get there this year, and if he hadn't, by the time he got hurt, hopefully he'll be back to do that job, and he could do it again next year. He could be three years in a row, 1,000 yards if he's healthy. First and goal from the nine, handoff up the middle. And still no whistle. Let's see who the ball carrier was. Again, Frontier, they run their offense very tightly bunched. They may have gone to the fullback. That was Dobis, and yeah, Bryce is kind of uh, limping a little bit. Wordley will come off blight into the game, so he'll be the fullback. Dobis will line up second slot left, slot line. right is Landry. Six yard line, second down and goal from there. Frontier looking to tack on six more. Hildreth, give right side, right. it's Dobis. And did he get in? Very Ooh, close. close. One yard line. I say Bryce one more time here. 50 yards, and eight carries for him, and uh, yeah, why not? You know what, Worsley's got three touchdowns in this one. we got the two rushing touchdowns, a fumble recovery for the touchdown. Over threw a touchdown. They had a pass for the touchdown. Yeah. It was brilliant play, yeah. uh, play but action. I'd like to see a Dovis touchdown right now. That'd be, uh, that'd be uh, give it a good feel, man. Again, they had a tough season this year. That ball is right outside the goal line. Third and goal from the one. Hildreth. Dobis. He'll give it to Dobis, and Bryce Dobis. rambles into the end zone. There you go, kid. Touchdown. 32-8 Frontier. Very nice. Bryce Dobis on the scoreboard. Nine carries, 53 yards for him. Again, Stephen Wordley. 13 carries, 64 yards, three touchdowns, two on rushes, one on a fumble recovery. And Aaron Landry just doing what Aaron Landry does, 12 carries, 127 yards. He's over 1,000 for the season, back-to-back -back years for him. 32-8 Frontier in a game we thought was going to be competitive, and it started out competitive for a little while. It's been all Frontier now for a while. And now they're going to go for two as they flip-flop between Two and one. They give it to Stephen Wordley, and he'll go on the right side. And a very late call, but he did get in. The two point conversion is good. 8.09 to play in the football game. All Frontier, as they will now leap into first place in the league. They lead at 34 8 on the conquest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Children's Scoreboard. Back here in the Alabama Insurance Broadcast booth, Brian with a high kick over everyone. It's going to go all the way down to the one. They have to take it out. And the deep man's going to take it downfield. Makes a couple of nice cuts. Still on his feet. What a great and return. What a great return. That was brings it out nice. to the 23-yard line. He took it from the one-yard line. The ball never made it in the end zone, so he had to take it he out. He had no choice. He did everything correctly. He chased it back, and then he got around behind the ball and hoped it would just crawl over the end line. It did not. It stopped right at the one. He had to field it. And really, that's a terrific return right there to be able to go from your own one. The defenders were bearing down. We've seen the Red Hawks. Good downfield coverage on the kicks all night. That's a nice return right there. Well, again, uh, you know, you're looking at this lopsided scoreboard right now, 34-8. But we've seen this Pellegrini kid air it out. And he can throw the ball deep. And these guys can strike quickly. They're going to have to even think about trying to get back into this. Eight minutes to go in a game. Pellegrini will give to Dave Hellams. He'll take it over the left tackle. He brings it around the 34-yard line or so. It'll be second down and long. I tell you, they're not going to play during the regular season anyway, but teams that used to be big rivals in the Intercounty League before Ware dropped down. Ware and Fronte used to have great games. It'd be kind of fun to see those two teams play. Ware's just been I, phenomenal this year. Ware could play anybody in this league, and it would be a fun game to watch. Yeah, that's a very good football team. Second down and seven. Shot confirmation. They go right back to Helms again, and Dave has it right near the first down. Oh, he got stood up, though, and pushed back. But Ford Momentum has them right near the first down marker. It looks like it'll be third down and short, though. But interesting here, Sean, I mean, you know, it's probably too deep a hold that they have dug, 
but uh, not taking downfield shots here. Yeah, you know, and again, it's uh, you see the kid, he's got a big arm, this Pellegrini. I can't wait to see him next year, just a junior. Uh, you see him take their shots. He is seven of 12 passing. Yeah, some of those balls he threw in the first half, though, were just beautifully thrown. And a couple drops in there, too. So, yeah, yeah no, he's done a fine job, no doubt. Yeah, there was one that would have gone for six, for sure, at a time when this game was still close. Yeah. Third and short, out of the shotgun. And it's Helms How again, Helms, and he has the first down. Right across the 35, they'll stop the clock just to set up chain. And uh, usually on first down, that's a time when you might want to take your shot downfield. You know, they really, I think, the, the, the change in this game came on that fourth and goal stop by the Red Hawks. Yeah. And, you know, that at that point it was, what, 18, 16-8, uh, 18-6? 19-8. 19-8. 19 uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah, we were looking at East Hampton getting in the end zone and tightening that thing up. Instead, they got stopped. And then a couple plays later, Frontier scored. And, yeah, it's been all Frontier. Pellegrini. Davio comes in motion. Flag down, he's gonna throw a deep ball on the right side. He's got a man down there, it is caught. 30 yard line. Oh, and then he got hit hard at the end of the play. Baker Sincero. Oh, and that's coming back, that's and too close. it is gonna come back. What a great yeah. effort by Sincero to make that catch. And Five yard penalty. Do you see how high that flag went? It looked like one of those little parachute guys. Remember the thing you throw up in the air and then they yeah, just kinda. Those, those army guys little army guy with the, the, the yeah. strings, little plastic thing you throw yeah. up in the air. That flag was about 30 feet in the air. Yeah, Sincero, not the biggest kid. Again, they don't list heights and weights on the roster, but he looks like uh, about 5'7", maybe 145, something like that. He runs some real nice routes tonight. He's made a couple of catches. and yeah, he's waving. He needs to come off. He's yeah. waving for a sub. He was backpedaling as the ball came in, and then a defender came in and kind of rolled him over. It looked like he took a shot right in the mug as he was falling backwards. I'm not sure if he hit his head. Of course, it's a grass field, so... Uh, he didn't look concussed or anything, but he took a shot in the, in the face as he was falling backwards. Emerson Fulta, number two, checks in. He's a special teamer, a senior, but he'll be out on this set. And he'll come split wide to the left. Did you want that Greenfield Ethel uh, score a bit? Uh, oh, there was another score? Yeah, no. How, how bad is it? It's oh, woo, 41-12. Yeah. Greenfield got, Greenfield getting smoked. Eight minutes to go in the fourth. In Tool Town. Well, Greenfield's back to 500 now. Pass, Pass is thrown too high. Max Davio incomplete. And uh, Max Davio, who scored that lone touchdown second last down week against Weir, couldn't Eagles. crawl it too high. It'll be uh, second, second down in 15. 15. It was thrown a little high, but that's a case where you've got a couple of linebackers that are coming right at you, and you're trying to catch that ball and turn around to see which way you want to go to have them not hit you squarely. And it was a little high, but a catchable ball, I think. 5.26 to play in the football game. And Baker... Sincero is back out there now after uh, missing a player or two with that injury. Out of the pistol formation. Back to pass Pellegrini, dumps it off on the left side. That is caught in just a short game. Helms got picked up in the backfield. Just a gain of a couple. It'll be third down and one. So Frontier will up their record to uh, six and one. A good spot. Four, Four and three will be the record now of East Hampton. And this game wasn't much in doubt. Well, after that opening drive, we're thinking, oh, what, what might be happening here? But since then, all Red Hawks. We have Turner's Tech tomorrow. We'll find out how Mahar did against uh, Mount Greylock. That's a tough one. Yeah, see how Mohawk did it against with Ware, Ware visiting. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one for them. Hopefully they can hold their own there a little bit. On third and long, Pellegrini airing it out on the right side into double coverage, but he wow. still makes the catch. <laughs> yeah. Wow, Baker Sincero made the catch. He came down hard again, kind of similar to that other play. Yeah, very similar. He went up in the, between the two defenders. This time he was able to, yeah, he's got a, it looked like a little ankle or something there. He's yeah. trying to trying to jog that off there, but a 25-yard strike, 85, 95, 110 yards now for Pellegrini. 9 of 15 passing. Surprised they didn't First go to the pass defense. earlier. I mean, you know, again, you have a lot of time, you're down big, and they ran the ball a bunch of times, and I uh, was surprised they didn't take a bunch of shots like that instead, but, you know, 34 8, I guess, at, you know, at this point, you punch one in, make it look a little better. Pistol formation, two receivers to the far side left, one to the near side right. Back to pass, throws over the middle. That is caught by Helms. Complete to Helms. Looking for a block, turns the corner, tried to use a stiff arm, and he got belted out of bounds short Not of the first of down. 
Clock is out, 3.55 to play. Again, Frontier leading big, 34-8. Yeah, and again, uh, the numbers starting to pile up here for the East Hampton quarterback. 120 yards now passing. Nine yards, second 10 and 10 to 16, and he has had a fine night. You know, really getting out of the backfield has been the problem. The Red Hawks have played some pretty good run defense, and Dave Helms, Helms uh, 15 carries. He's got about 70 yards right now. He is the leading ground gainer. Uh, yeah. Ish, Ish has 48 yards, and uh, Sophie Peck, we only saw him with one carry. He had a 12-yard carry there in the first half. I haven't seen him since. Yeah, Helms has uh, definitely had a lot of touches here tonight. He's seen a lot of action. Back to pass, Pellegrini throwing. Left sideline deep. Receiver got turned around. The pass falls incomplete. Pass Again, he was looking for Baker Sincero. Double coverage, and, and you're right, Jeff. It was awkward the way he turned around, but still he had a good beat on the ball. Two defenders on him, and he ended up twisting around, falling backwards as that ball arrived. Well, he is a junior, so he'll be back next year. And I think that combination, the two of them, you know, they'll work out, presumably, together the rest of this year, maybe a little bit over the summer. And, yeah, you're going to have to account for these guys next year. I mean, you have to account for them this year. Uh, right now, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, not for the next 347, but... This one is in the bank for the Red Hawks. Third down in two, and they will go to Peck up the this middle. Has the, the first carry. down, so Soapy, good job there. Yeah, Carlson just a second. Carry just mentioned his name. Had the one carry in the first down. half for 12 yards, and that'll be his second <laughs> carry. <laughs> I, I'm laughing because one of the frontier uh, defensive linemen was on his back, and he went to get up, and he put his arm up to get help by someone, but no teammate was anywhere near him at first. Yeah. So he's kind of laying there. Uh, little help? We left him hanging there for a minute, but then... Uh, Finally, someone came yeah, over. Yeah, they saw him there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Get up there, buddy. Clock in motion, 3.30 to play. Frontier leading Big East Hampton trying to get in for a second time tonight. And they scored the first touchdown with 34 unanswered, at least to now. All right, they're going down towards the end zone. Ball incomplete. They were pass looking at it down to Akinauer. Pass batted down there by Hildreth. Second down and 10. Well, that's really one of the first yeah, throws that I would say was a, a true Hawks. jump ball in that situation. He had uh, his receiver, a couple of Second defenders, ball came in, and uh, that could have gone either way. It looked like the Red Hawks were going to come up with it, but it fell incomplete. 313 to play here in the game. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's tough to put it exactly where you want it. That's why when you see some of the camera shots that we get now in network TV and NFL games, when you see a guy like Brady put it from 30, 35 yards right in the perfect spot mm. to be caught but not get picked, it, it really is amazing what they can do. Heavy rush. They're going to go a draw play. Hellums wrapped up for no gain. It'll be third down and long. They ran that draw earlier, and it worked pretty well, but... And here again, their real goal is just to try to, uh, in the last three minutes of this game, punch one more into the end zone. Again, down 34-8. Yeah, there was a time when this was a very close ball game, and we thought it was going to be a close ball game throughout, but this Red Hawk defense really has asserted itself, and the offense did what the offense does. Third down and 11. 33-yard line of Frontier. They'll send two receivers to the far side left, one to the near side right. And we have a timeout called, by the, called by the Eagles. We'll take the break. 2.31 to play in the football game. CarQuest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard. Frontier and Frontier Big. It's 34-8. Robert Heaton. All 
All right, back here in the Albert Bialen Insurance broadcast booth. It's third down and 11 for East Hampton. And out of the pistol formation. Pellegrini back to pass. Deep ball, left side, into double coverage. Uh, looking for Akenauer, batted down by Frontier. And it'll be fourth down and 11. He has not thrown an interception East tonight. He's passed the ball now, attempted passing the ball 24 times, says the quarterback, Nick Pellegrini. Throwing a touchdown, no interceptions. Last couple have been jump balls, though. I asked you about your golf game. Yeah. And you said that you weren't good yet. No, no, and I downplay. Well... I heard though that you're, you're you're not really being totally honest. Well, I heard I've heard that it's coming along. If I say I'm getting better, people will stop giving me strokes. <laughs> okay, you're saying that. <laughs> okay, come on. I, I see which way the wind's blowing. <laughs> All right, East Hampton's lined up in punt formation. Aaron Landry to punt for East Hampton. Fourth and eleven. Aaron Landry. We'll see if they actually go through this. I don't know either would. Landry is going to fake it. He's going to take off on the right side. Right sideline. Still going. Hey, gonna be short. He got popped at the end. One of the Frontier guys almost took out one of the Frontier coaches. And almost and Scott, Scott Dredge. Landry Frontier little guy's carry. over there, the water guy. Did he get the first? Yeah. He uh, did. Did he get there? Well, it's first down either way. Right, I don't know. It's either that. first down East Hampton or. No, I think it's going the other way. I thought yeah, it was right. short. He got a little short. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Very good for an eagle first down. Golf and me are, are not friends. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things that, yeah, it's, <laughs> uh, you know, there's different uh, aspects, you know, driving and your iron game and your putting and your chipping. And uh, no matter how good you're feeling about that, there's always one of them that's not working. You know, you don't get them all working at the well, same well, time. Well, you know what's you know? weird, Sean? I was a friend of, you know, when I played my best golf was when I was a kid. When I did, when I wasn't overthinking, I was just having fun. Just hit the ball. I made some, you first know. First and 10 Eagles. Oh, what's first and 10 Eagles? Okay. Line. Yeah, all right. Good for them. 21-yard line. Yeah, I used to make some really, dare I say, um, great shots when I was like 15 years old. Right. Now I just let's I'm, get you back out there. Not, <laughs> yeah, we, we'll see about that. Back to pass on first and ten, and he's sacked. He's going down. The pocket collapsed. Ball came out late, but it was on the Pellegrini ground. Pellegrini had by dropped for a loss of about two. Donovan back to the 25. Second sack. Of the And our post-game show is coming up, including our player of the game. More on that in a bit. And then we'll get set for Turner's at Tech. Greenfield Dathol is the final now. 42-12, is that the final? Yeah, I, you know, I, I'm disappointed for Greenfield, honestly. I mean, the, the season started out so well for them, and it had been, you know, a few years since they've had some success. And, boy, they had those big linemen and R.J. Bird running the ball and Owen throwing the ball pretty good. And, uh, yeah, that's just a tough one to go down there and get smacked like that. Yep, they have some serious defensive problems, obviously. Second down and long. Pellegrini looking right. Pump fake, throws over the middle. High tip, intercepted oh, by Worthley. By number 29, Stephen Worthley. Worthley's had a heck of a night. He had a touchdown Five. run, two touchdown runs, and a fumble recovery so score. What a way to play for two They've got the win, and they've got a stranglehold on the league now. Yeah, first pick of the game thrown by Pellegrini. And again, the last couple of Ben jump balls, that one there. He just tried to stuff it into a spot where there was a linebacker set right in the middle, and easy, easy interception there for the Red Hawks. So they'll just run this clock out now. A minute eight to play, 34, up 34-8. If something happened to Corbin Blight, and that last play, he came to the sideline. He's uh, walking off some sort of injury. Remember Ian Blight? Remember Ian, yeah. Good ball player. Yeah, football player. I remember covering him. Uh, basketball, right? Basketball, oh, yeah. yeah. Forward. Stevie Wordley on oh, the he right might side. As well, huh? He might as well. First down. Just go. Run out of bounds. 20 yards. Yeah, we'll see. It's going to be interesting, Sean. Greenfield Turner's the rematch. Greenfield won 12 to nothing at Vets Field. Down. And statistically, they dominated the game. I remember Turner's they falls. They did dominate the game. Um, not on the scoreboard necessarily, but but um, Turner's falls had no offense that night. They held and Marcus Sanders to 55 yards rushing, and, and Kyle great. Dodge wasn't throwing the ball the way he is now. Yeah, so I think we're gonna. I think we're looking at a very different scenario on Thanksgiving morning over there at Turner's Falls High. Well, Greenfield's got a throwing quarterback as well. You know, again, if Bird is down for the for that game, and we're not sure we did hear he suffered a leg injury. Not sure the extent of it. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see him next week. But if not, certainly on Thanksgiving morning. And 
All right, Frontier's gone into victory formation, and Hildreth took a knee. He'll have to take one more here. And then this one will be in the book. So it turns out senior night will be a good night, a great night for the home team Red Hawks. They were, they were really good tonight after an early scare. It was, yeah, early this was a competitive game. That's we thought it was going to be Hawks. a competitive right game. Next Friday night, East Hampton scored. Frontier Red shot back, took the lead. East Hampton had a shot to come back. Down two scores, they were right at the goal line. Frontier stopped them, and then a couple plays later, they had their own touchdown, and really that was the beginning of the end. All right, one more knee and by Hildreth. Great game, great game, great game, fellas. The final score, very, the Frontier very good effort yeah. by the Frontier Red Hawks. Good defense tonight, eight points given up to this yep. team. In all phases, you're yep. right, Sean. And they will now take over first place in the inter League North, and now four and three for these East Hampton Eagles. Final score here on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield and Shelburne scoreboard. It is the Frontier Red Hawks 34, the East Hampton Eagles eight. Stay tuned, our post game show coming up next on Bear Country 95.3. Financial support for FCAT's coverage of local high school sports provided by Leader Home Centers, your hometown home center with five locations to serve you in Amherst, South Deerfield, Barry, Greenfield, and Brattleboro, Vermont, or online at leaderhome.com. Visit them for all your building material needs. Raymond Financial Services, LLC. Take charge of your financial future. Insurance, investments, and benefits for individuals and employers. Attorney Daniel Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan's a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs.